Can you see this? I screen? currently see an ad, so hold on. Damn it. <laughs> it's loading something. Yep, I see it. The stream is working? The stream is working? Yes, no? I see, yes. Okay. Hello, everybody who is watching, which is literally just Zagnix. Um, welcome to my stream. Um, here is a view of the module as it exists so far. As you can see, I've already done uh, quite a bit of modeling. Um, we're going to be creating a module for Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, and it's going to deal with this uh, round piano that you can see here. But it's going to be quite a bit more colorful than this. The module is going to be called Simon Sings. Now, uh, Zeknus, could you do me a favor and post the link to the stream to the... Uh, bomb talk where space crew is talking and and also posted to modding um thank you um so it's a bit of a shame that i didn't get to stream the process up until now because um it was actually quite interesting to create these uh keys but um would you like me to go through the manual first so that you know what we're doing? Sure. Okay. So the manual So the manual looks something like this. Um I'm going to zoom in so you can hopefully read this better. Okay, on the subject of Simon Sings. This module consists of a round piano board with the usual white keys being the colors of the rainbow. Okay, that's already outdated. It's just going to be random colors. I'm going to rephrase the entire manual later. There is also a flashing light in the center of the module that blinks many different colors. These colors that it blinks are going to be the colors of the keys. Okay, so each color that flashes will map to one of the 12 keys in an octave. <clears throat> the light in the center blinks eight different colors, each of which translates to a binary digit according to table one below. We'll get to that table. Each group of four consti constitutes one four-digit binary number. White indicates the space between the numbers. Okay, so what this means is, so let's say it flashes red, right, and the C key is red. Then you look at the rule for C, and it will tell you whether that is a zero or a one. It's gonna be, it's gonna translate to a binary digit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have eight colors. You take the first four, create a binary di number from that, and then you take the other four and get another binary number from that. Um, and then you're going to look up uh, that number in table 2. As you can see, the numbers from 0 to 11 map again to keys, right, where 0 is C and uh, the last one, 11, is B. And then the remaining five, 4 are this, the first, the first key that flashed, whose color flashed. So that means that if you get 000 as your binary number, then you, you're supposed to press Charlie. You know, you're supposed to play the C key on the keyboard. Uh, if you get a 6, then there's going to be F sharp. And if you get a 12, then you're supposed to press the key that has the same color as the first color that flashed. Okay? Right, then it says uh, the keyboard has two octaves, one on the left half and one on the right half. The note to press is on the other side from the previous press, so we're going to alternate back and forth left and right. Okay, if your second press was on the right, your third press will be on the left. That's an example. I don't like having examples of manuals, so I'm just going to take, take that out. Start on the left if the serial number has a vowel, and right if it is not. Okay, so it just arbitrarily tells you whether to start on the left or right. Then use table 2 if necessary to convert binary to decimal numbers, and use the diagram at the bottom to figure out which node to press. Okay, that diagram has now been merged with the table, so I'm going to have to reword that too. Okay, do you have any questions, Zank, next? I mean, I'm a little confused, but that's usually when I read a manual for the first time, and I have to see it in action. Okay, then I'll show it. Then, it I'll, then I'll show it to you in action. So if I run this the way I've created it so far, is it flashes uh, either blue or black in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is a sort of long white uh, in between. You can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the long white. And then we have black, black, black.
blue, black. So that's a two. And then we have black, blue, blue, black. So that's a six. So we have two and six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now two re uh, translates to delta and six translate to foxtrot sharp. So we want to press delta and then foxtrot sharp. Now the serial number uh, is uh, this, 8L8VW4, and the serial number does not contain a vowel, so we start on the right. So the solution now is the delta on the right and then the foxtrot sharp on the left, okay? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. press the delta here, and you see it says that's correct. Then I'll press the foxtrot sharp here, and it says correct, and also, there is a sort of status light on the bottom right of the module, which now uh, you know shows that the first stage is done. So now there are eight more uh, colors that will flash, and we always have to press what we've already pressed and then add two more. So it's still uh, delta and then foxtrot, foxtrot sharp, and now we have uh, golf sharp and golf. So we'll press golf sharp here and golf there. Okay, so that's the first two stages solved. Now, if I mess up, it will reset that stage, but not, uh, you know, any stage that you've done, you're done. Right, but, uh, right. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. Now, what I need to do is I need to color all of the keys, and I want to color them randomly. I'll get to that in a second. And then I'll have to have it flash, have, have to have the center light flash according to the colors of those keys. Okay? Mm -hmm. You good so far? Yep, makes sense. Okay. Now, what I want to do regarding the colors is that I quite like the fact that the manual doesn't actually mention the colors themselves, right? It doesn't mandate that one of them has to be red, one of them has to be green. Instead, they can technically be any color. Any color mm -hmm. at all. Right. So I was thinking that, you know, color, uh, let me, let me bring up this little page that I have here. So I can sort these colors by hue on the X axis and lightness on the Y axis. Actually, let me try saturation. Yeah, saturation. Okay. So I know that there is a stream delay, so it'll take a while for this to load on your end. Let me know when you can see it. I can see. Okay, so as you can see, gray is at the top, right? But at the bottom, you have the entire rainbow going from left to right, okay? Mm -hmm. So if we want seven colors for the white keys that are maximally discernible, we want them to have a kind of, you know, maximum distance between them, between every pair of them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we we want to treat the entire top part of this diagram as gray, right? Because the, the very top has zero saturation, so it's all gray. And we want to treat the bottom of this diagram as the most colorful, right? Because it has the most sort of uh, diversity in, in colorfulness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now one structure that I thought of that has this property is a hemisphere. So if we define a hemisphere where the gray is on the North Pole and the entire rainbow is on the equator, as we know, the rainbow is kind of like a cycle, you know, it goes around. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what we actually want to do is we want to find seven points on the surface of a hemisphere in such a way that each of these points has a reasonable distance from each other. Does that make yep. sense? Okay. Um, now, uh, Wikipedia has an article on the um, uh, great circle distance. There is a formula there, which I saw earlier today. It's this formula here, which allows me to calculate the distance along the surface of a sphere between any two points identified by the longitude and latitude. And in our case, the latitude is going to be the uh, saturation, and the longitude is the hue. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? Yep. Okay. So, um, to make it simple, I'm going to start by simply generating seven points 
which are sufficiently far away from each other and you know if 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 I can't find a point that fits then just start again um but if I find that the colors are not discernible enough then I'm actually considering using simulated annealing to find a set of seven colors that is maximally far away from each other hmm. make sense mm-hmm. okay now um I, th- of course, there is a third dimension to color, which is brightness or lightness, and I'm not using that right now. Uh, the main reason being that I actually want the quote-unquote white keys to have very bright colors and the black keys to have very dark colors. So I'm going to use the same hemisphere, but separately for the white and the black keys, and the black keys are all going to have very low lightness, so they're all going to be dark colors, and the white keys are going to have high lightness so they're all going to be bright colors make sense mm-hmm. okay so now let's let's try that and this is gonna uh this is gonna go horribly wrong i can i can see it already i'm going to increase the font size here so you can read this um um so i'm going to Uh-oh. put that I'm getting a phone call here back. okay see you in a bit I'm going to keep talking because maybe somebody is watching me. I don't know if uh, Space Crew is watching. And I don't even know how... To... Oh, I do have a chat window. Hello, Mark Sam. Um, as you can see, Mark Sam, I am actually using the same font in the chat. So, hehe, <laughs> cool. Um, Bombot8885, I wonder who that is. Oh, it's Elias. I would not have guessed. No, just kidding. Um... <laughs> So apparently Space Crew is here. Mm, apparently, there are quite a few people here. I am impressed. Okay, so as I've explained, I'm going to generate these um, colors. So uh, var colors is equal to a list, a list of... Now we want pairs of doubles, right? We want the hue, which is the latitude, Sorry, longitude and the saturation, which is the latitude. So, um, I think I'm just going to make it two lists. So, these are the hues, and then we have the saturations. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to generate seven of them. So, um, we want a random hue, so we do range from 0 to 360. We want a saturation, which is a value from 0 to 1. Um, right, and now I want to check that this value that we've just generated is not too close to any of the ones that we've already generated. So let's check all the, uh, all, all the ones that we've already generated. Uh, I have flies in my room, so if you hear me uh, hit my hand, it's because I'm trying to swat flies. <clears throat> really annoying. So, um, we have this um, formula here. So let, let's try and actually implement this formula. So, the delta lambda, lambda is, lambda is latitude, I believe. Uh, yeah, and phi is the longitude. Okay, so... Um, so the delta lambda is going to be the, uh, uh, the, uh, absolute value of, um, the, uh, God, uh, the latitude that we have, which is the saturation, minus, uh, the saturation that we're looking at. Okay, that's our delta lambda. Now, the, um, the angles, phi 1, phi 2 are gonna be, so phi 1, uh, phi 1 is, um, that's the angle that we have, which, which is u, it's literally just u, so phi 1 is, is u, okay, that, that's already an angle, and then phi 2 obviously is u, u is j, so we don't need to write that, so the cos of phi 1, which I'm just gonna call c1, is going to be math.cos, of uh, of um, hue uh, 
times math pi divided by 180 because I have to convert from uh, you know from degrees to radians okay and then the cosine of the other one is going to be uh, use j like that okay and then we have the signs which is that okay now let's see if there are any messages in the chat there are none okay that's uh, reassuring <laughs> well, wait hang on maybe it means that everyone left okay well I don't know so now we've got the sines and the cosines. Yeah, I think that's it. So now we can plug that into this formula. So the delta sigma is going to be uh, math dot arctan two of uh, math dot square root of. Now we're going to have to square something. So I'm going to because um, you know unfortunately there is no math dot square. So I'm going to define myself a square function, um, which I'm going to do here, private uh, static double square of a value, return, whoops, return value times value. There you go. So we want to square cosine of phi 2 times the sine of delta lambda. Um, that is our first square, and then plus another square of uh, cosine 1 times sine 1 minus, oops, it should be sine 2, minus sine 1 times cos 2 times the cosine of delta lambda. That's the end of that square, that's the end of that square root, and now the other arctan parameter is the bottom of this fraction, which is sine 1 times sine 2 plus cos 1 times cos 2 times the cosine of that. Phew. Now, I want that distance. Oh, here's another thing. The saturation is a value from 0 to 1. We need that to be in the range from 0 to 90 because it's going to be, uh, you know, an angle on the top half of, of a hemisphere. So I guess I'm I'm just going to make it a 90 here and then translate it back to a range from 0 to 1 when we actually um uh you know convert it to colors. I also need to remember that 0 is actually the maximum saturation because 0 latitude is the equator at which we want maximum saturation and 90 is the north pole at which we want no saturation so i'm gonna have to remember to flip that around now um if this ds is too small the radius of the sphere is going to be one so it did so one whole revolution no hang on a 90 degrees revolution is going to be pi Pi, 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 um, divided by 2 is 1.5. So if I want to fit 7 points into this space, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to try point 0.1. Okay, so if this is too small, then I'm going to try and generate a new one. So go to try again, and I'm going to try again. But I don't want it to keep trying indefinitely, so I'm going to count the number of tries that we had, num tries plus plus, um, and now if num tries is greater than let's say 10, then I'm going to try everything again, which means I'm going to start again from the very top. And then hopefully at some point this will uh, get me seven colors, but just on the off chance, um, I'm going to count these as well and say if this is greater than, I don't know, 100 or so, then I'm going to uh, output a log to say uh, some things uh, could not generate colors for the puzzle and uh, return and, and I guess handle pass in case I forget about this and it actually does happen, but I don't think it will happen. Okay, now that we have these views and saturations, we're now going to color the actual keys. This is only the white keys. So, 
um, the white keys are actually keys number 0, which is C, uh, D, E, F, G, A, and B. That's wrong, because B should be 11. Uh, C, D, E, yeah, this is the way I went wrong. 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay. Did anyone notice that? Um, nope. <laughs> well, maybe you did, and uh, there is a lag, so you probably saw it. You, you will probably see it, and then I've already solved it, so never mind. So, for each of these keys, um, keys of white keys i equals new color. Actually, it should be color from, no, from H, HSV. That's not the same as HSL, is it? So I'm not entirely sure if I can use this, but I'm going to try it. So, the U is uh, use I. Um, oh, it needs to be from 0 to 1, so I'm going to divide that by 360. And then I'm going to have a saturation of... Um, this is also from 0 to 1, so saturations of I is going to be from 0 to 90, so 90 minus that is going to flip it around and then um, divide that by 90, it gives me a number from 0 to 1. And then finally the value, I'm just going to make it 0.75 for now, uh, which, okay, so now material, ooh, oh, of course, um, get component mesh renderer material color, there you go. Whew, okay, this is going to go horribly wrong, but let's see what happens if I start this code. Argument out of range. Let's see, we have an error at line 87. Oh, I never put these numbers into the list. Once this happens, I want to add uh yeah i want to add wait no it's here isn't it so use add q and saturations add saturation so at that point they should all be in the list uh let's cancel that and let's run it again and see what happens um okay i am get getting some colors here but as you can see, these two colors are definitely too similar, right? So clearly the distance metric is not working very well. So I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to output some log messages here. Um, um, so um, I have key names already declared here, so I'm just going to use that. Uh, so key names of white keys i and uh, hues and saturations. Let's see what hues and saturations we get. Now we're going to get different colors now because obviously it's random. So there we go. These actually look sufficiently distinct. Well, except maybe the B and the C. They look very much grayish both. So... um. Let's take a look at this. This actually looks pretty nice. Okay, I'm gonna keep restarting it until I get another one of those two colors that are very similar. Okay, here we have these two. They are very similar. I mean, not, not all that similar, but as you can see, the difference in the hue is only 16, but the saturation is very different. Um, so... Let me do a few more runs and see what kind of color palette. Oh, there we go. We have two that are far too similar here. This is F and G. So it's those two. As you can see, the difference in hue is only two because it wraps around from 360, right? So 360 is the same as zero. So from 359 to one is only two. And the difference in hue is only six. So that is tiny. So, oh. hello, Zechnix. Welcome back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to output all of the distances just to see if the uh, distance metric works. So I'm going to 
I'm going to put all of this into a uh, method. Um, spherical distance. Okay. Uh, and I want. Okay, I don't want a list of doubles. I want the. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so first of all, the original U and original saturation should be the first parameter. So let's move those around. This should be a double. This should be a double. Why aren't they doubles? Did I I did make them a list of doubles. Oh, but I used random dot range there. Right, so I'm gonna make these floats so that they are actually floating point values. There we go. So hopefully now wait, floats? No, I, w I want them doubles. Um Yeah, I am actually should I should I use the same random number generator as Unity, or should I use the, uh, or or should I just do all of the calculations and float? I mean, I could do that. Um, may maybe that would work better if I did that. So I'll change all of it to float, even though I don't really like it. But um, so my spherical distance now uses float, float, and then these are all gonna use math f. Um. Math F, math F, math F, math F. Uh, this is all floats. Uh, math F, math F, math F, and my square function needs to use floats, floats. There we go. Now, um, Q, as we've established, is longitude. Okay, so U is going to be the first longitude, and U is J is going to be the other longitude. So let's replace that with a float longitude 2. And our saturation is the latitude. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is. And this is going to be the latitude 2. So this is latitude 2. And now we don't need in j anymore. And now when we call spherical distance, this is going to be use j and saturations j. Now, we have a function that calculates the spherical distance. And now I can output all of the um, spherical distances between uh, all of the, right, so distance between 1 and 2 is 3. So key names, white keys, I and key names white keys J is distance, I mean spherical distance. So we have longitude, longitude is U, yes, so this is correct, and then we do use J and saturations J. Phew, so that was quite a mouthful. Let's abbreviate that. Now, if I run this again, I should see the distances in the logging. Okay, again, we have two colors that are very similar here, A and B. So, let's look for the distance between A and B. B and A, there we go, it's 0.5. So, uh, what is the distance? Oh, it's 0.1. Okay, so 0.5 is still too close. So, I'm, and, and there are some which have a distance of like 2 point something. So, I'm going to change the maximum allowed distance to 1. There you go. And see what this difference that makes. Okay, it did still generate enough colors. But I think that G and A here are still too similar. So let's take a look at the difference distance between G and A, which is there. 2.4, no. F, G, A. That can't be right. Because it says A and F are much closer than A and G. Okay. I am confused by that. Does anyone have an idea why this might be happening? Is it wrapping around the sphere again? So it's taking angle greater than 360? The, uh, the spherical distance function should take care of that. Hmm. The spherical distance function considers these all to be angles and uses sines and cosines. So it should, you know, 360 should come out the same as, as zero. So it's not that. I don't think it's that. 
Um, let's compare D and B. Um, that's 1.1, that's reasonable. But look at this, B and E are also supposedly very close, but they look very different. Um, they all have the same lightness, so it's only the saturation that would... Hmm. Could it be? Yeah, I have a theory. Is it because, it could be because, um, I mean, if you imagine a hemisphere, right? If you look at the distance between the North Pole and the equator, there's only one quarter circle. But the distance between one point on the equator and the opposite point of the equator is twice that. So... Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I don't know what my point is. Where am I getting, getting at? But it, seem, it seems to me that those which are very close, like this one here, the B and the D, um, they are always very close in hue, and the saturation al almost doesn't matter, right? Okay, let's let's compare D and E. I'm gonna bet that the distance there is pretty small too. Um, distance between E and D. Oh, it's not that small. Between E and C is smaller. Ah, <sighs> this is confusing. Hmm, but um. Let, let's see if I can just change it from 1 to 2 and still have it generate a fair set of colors. Okay, at this point it no longer succeeds because it says could not generate colors. So it tried 100 times and couldn't get any to work. So let's try 1.5. Load. Okay, even with 1.5, it doesn't work. It still says could not generate colors. Hmm, and the lights don't turn on. Why is that? Huh. That is a bit strange. Let's try 1.2. Still could not generate colors. But it worked with 1, didn't it? Yeah, it works with one. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm a little worried because it seems at this point that it will generate colors that are too similar too often. Right? Mm hmm. So, um. Do I want to try simulated annealing? You can try it. You can try it. Do you know how simulated annealing works? Because it's going to be quite a bit of work. Um, I've done it very well. Take a look at the enough. chat. Hey, Tim Wee. Yeah. Tim Wee Program Stream. Holy, that looks weird. Um, mm, okay. Um, I want to try a little more if there is a small variation to this algorithm before I go ahead on into simulated annealing, which is a lot of work. Um, maybe it just needs more than 100 attempts. If I try one, let's try 1.2 and change the number of attempts from, uh, from, from 100 to 1000. Because I know that the chess module sometimes goes through a hundred, so goes through four hundred attempts to find a good uh, solution. Okay, so here we go. We found something, and we still have colors that are fairly similar. But I notice that maybe the only reason they're that similar is because of their high saturation, right? So, Maybe specifying a certain a minimum for both the hue and the saturation separately. Um, well, the reason the I didn't between. yeah the reason I didn't want to do that is because you know it, it should be possible to have gray and we do have gray here on the alpha, um, mm -hmm. and that one should exclude every other color of no saturation. 
you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. what I really want to do is I want to allow more variation on the hues, i.e. The, the longitude, than on the saturation, i.e. the latitude. So, um, okay, I'm going to try something else. I'm, I'm going to randomize only the hues and not the saturation, right? In which case, I don't even need the spherical distance formula anymore. Um, I think that's actually a good try. Hi there, is that Livio? Exactly. Hello, Livio. Okay. Hi. So, Hi. Um, I'm just going to say the saturation is always uh, 0.6. Do I want 0.6? I want the saturation between 0 and 1. Maybe I should make it 0.9. Except I'm currently taking oh right, no, let's make it let's make it because it's it's supposed to be a number between zero and ninety because it's degrees of latitude. So I'm gonna make it ten for now. Um so it has a little bit of saturation, not too much. And see what that... Ash just said. Ooh, but not generate okay, let's see what Ash says. The problem you might be facing with hue and saturation randomness is that there's a lot of color similarity in the green space of a color wheel. I see. But we did have very similar blues as well earlier. Um, okay, so um, let's reduce this to one. I actually think I kind of know why uh, the lights aren't turning on because, you know, the module immediately solves, so the test harness has nothing to generate, so why should it turn on the light? I would argue that the bug in the test harness. Okay, now that looks very very much more like what I wanted. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to generate these uh, U values that are, you know, a certain minimum distance away. At the moment I have 0.7. Let's see if it can do 0.8. Although 0.7 already looked perfectly fine. Apparently it can do this. But you know, if I make that number too large, then it will literally uh, go through the rainbow and just shuffle up the rainbow. You know, and I don't want that, to, you know, I don't want the set of colors to be the same between modules, just in a different order. So I'm actually going to take it down again to 0.5 so that you get more different colors each time you run the module. There we go. Oh, damn it. Now we have two very similar blues. And now the distance between Charlie and Bravo is 0.5. Okay, so 0.5 is not good enough. So let's change it to 0.7. Okay, let, let's see if there are any that are yeah. Okay, so B and E are both 0.7. B is this one and E is that one. Yeah, they, they are sufficiently different. Now D and F have me a little worried here. Um take a look at D and F. That's oh, that's very close to 0.7. So I'm afraid that won't do. Uh, I would hate to have to like you know warp the um, hue spectrum just to make the green part of the spectrum more narrow. I would have to come up with a function for that. Okay, fine then. Let's have 0.8. Run that. And now let's see if there are any point eights. Yep, this one is very close to eight. D and F. Yeah, they are sufficiently dissimilar. And what about D and B? What is their distance? That is 0.88. Right. Okay, so what do you guys think? Is this set of colors sufficiently discernible, sufficiently different from each other? That you could definitely tell which color in that is flashing in the middle belongs to which key. I think so. Yes. The blue and the cyan are kind of, uh, but those are also kind of distinct. I would be able to uh, tell the difference between those two. Which ones? The blue and the cyan one. The keys. I don't think you, so. You find those hard to tell apart? No, I do not. But people might. Okay, well, that's uh, well. I I can see them apart. I could just uh, see people 
thinking that those are too similar. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, yeah. For now, I'm for now. I guess I'm happy with this. I'm gonna actually let me see if it can handle point nine, but I doubt it. Yeah, bang. That that doesn't work. How about point eight five? Yeah, that also bangs. So let's let's go with point eight. Um, okay, we have two blues here, but they're pretty easy to distinguish. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is to vary the um, saturation. So I'm not gonna have this list of saturations. Uh, oh wait, no, I do. I do need to keep a list of the colors. Ah, but I can just have a list of actual colors later. So I'm going to get rid of this, going to get rid of this. And um, since there's spherical distance, um, oh, wait a second. Oh, right, right. No, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, so at this point, I guess I only need um, circle distance, don't I? But now that I've got the formula, I think I'm just going to leave it. So I'm going to take the spherical distance at, um, you know, 10 degrees, which is what I had. Um, and then when I assign the actual color, uh, okay, let, let's just output the U here and not the saturation. Get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. So now I'm going to come up with a color. Um, which has the hue that we want. I don't need to do that anymore. So just divide that. And now the saturation, I'm going to randomize a bit. I'm going to randomize that between uh, 0 and 40? Is that... No, not 0, not 0. Sorry, I mean between... Yeah, let's randomize between 0.4 and 1. Right? Actually, I'm going to make it 0.6. Right, okay, and the lightness we've always kept at the same. I suppose I could vary that also a bit, but only a bit. Like maybe between 0.7 and 0.8. Okay, and then I'm going to assign that color here, and then also put it in a list. So private color um, key colors. And then I'm going to say that the key color of a uh, white keys i is equal to that color right and then later i'm gonna fill in the black keys so let's see that for now format exception in line okay let's see if anyone in the chat mentioned this we need to fill in different gamma responses contrast responses but that seems okay well thank you for your confidence there ash the bash and also thank you for your uh, feedback overall. That's uh, very helpful. Um, let's see, string dot format in line. This is so hard to take apart. There you go. It's in start line eighty three. Let's take a look at line eighty three. That's this one. U for this is U. Yep. There you go. Let's just remove that. Okay. Then let's start that. Null reference exception. Um, that, oh, pff, because I didn't instantiate the list, did I? Yeah, key colors. Okay, so, key colors equals new color 12. There you go. Sekiel has a question in the chat. Uh, what is the font you're using in Visual Studio? Uh, what is the font you're using in Visual Studio? Okay, well, it's an interesting question. At the moment, I'm using a font that is called Macando Swash Caps. Um, if you guys find this hard to read, I'm perfectly happy to change it. This is an alternative that I considered for the stream. Um, I guess this is pretty readable. Would you guys like me to switch to that font and use that instead? Um, Doesn't matter. I think maybe for the stream this is good, but yeah. I'll be gone, yeah. have fun programming. Okay, enjoy whatever it is you're doing. Bye. I'm going to sleep. Good night. <laughs> I don't.
I don't have a preference. I like both. Thank you, Zach. I really like my candles too, which is why I'm using it. But over the years, I've used lots of different fonts, even normal looking ones like this one. I've also used the reef fonts like this one here. This is Georgia. I quite like that one too. But uh, at the moment, you know, I haven't really used this particular font a lot. So I'm just going to use this for now and, and see how I um, get on with it. I'm already using that font in these tooltips, by the way. That tooltip already has that font. And uh, um, uh, yeah, that was already set up at the start. Anyway, so back to the topic. Um, so we've got our white colors. I mean, our white key colors. Yeah, that looks very nice. Though I do strongly suspect that this module is going to be the hardest for colorblind, for slightly colorblind people. You know, I mean, obviously colorblind people, you know, entirely colorblind people couldn't do Simon Screams either or, or other modules that already exist or wires. Um, you know, but this one here doesn't even try to come up with a set of colors that is um, amenable to any form of color blindness. So yeah, um, distinguishing two uh, similar colors might be hard. Yeah, but I'm gonna go with it for now and see if I get some feedback. In the worst case, I can still just come up with a specific set of seven colors, which is just gonna be shuffled up. Or maybe even more than seven, just as long as they're all distinguishable from each other. Um, does the chat agree? I think the color choices are good. They're distinguishable, at least for non-color. Yeah, pink versus red is an interesting choice. Okay, now let yeah. me comment on this because I haven't said this yet. I already told Mario this, but I, I suppose I can say this on the stream as well. Because one thing I really like about this mechanism right now is that this will be the first time that the, the colors uh, aren't named in the manual. You know, in all the other color modules, we have rules in the manual where a color maps to something. But this time, the manual only maps the key on the keyboard to a rule. But you're supposed to match the colors yourself. You only look at the keys and the colors that blink in the middle. Which means that you can give the colors names of your own that, you, that you're comfortable with, and your expert doesn't need to recognize the color. They only need to match them up, which is kind of similar to the symbols in Symbol Cycle. How is TP going to refer to them? It doesn't need to. In TP, you only need to press certain keys. So you just say press C sharp, for example. That's cool. Um, and even the logging technically doesn't need to refer to them. The logging will just say, well, I flashed in the color of C sharp, and then D sharp, and then A. And it translated to an answer of G. Neat. Thank you, Zach. I like that you find that neat. So let's carry on. We've done the white keys. I'm going to do the same thing for the black keys, which are. Uh, are C you sharp. still uh, logging the hue for the for like if someone would want to look at the log file? That is a very good point. I think I'm going to leave that in. Yeah, I don't need the distance formula anymore, but leaving the hue in is a good idea. Thank you. Hello, hello. Um, am I hearing? You're oh, hearing there, Rex. There is a very quiet voice. Let me see. Oh my, who turned you down that far? Hello, Rex. Say something. Good morning. Hello, Hi. Rex. Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. I don't know why you were that quiet. Um, so, got my use. Where's your stream? Your streaming development, is that it? Yes, that is correct. Um, so. Gotcha. So, I guess what I should really do, because I'm, I'm going to take a copy of this entire chunk of code, so I'm probably going to abstract this away into a method. Um, not all co code paths return. Oh, it's because we have a go to in here. We probably do want to. Yeah. Okay, right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to put blah here. I don't know what to call the method yet, but I'm going to call it something. And I want the uh, uh, key indexes or indices, as some people say, as a parameter. And I'm going to return a bool 
not a boo, but a bool, to say whether it was successful. So if this was successful, I'm going to say false. And at the end, if it was successful, I'm going to return true. Now, white keys is going to be the key indices. So um, let's uh, do that and get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to take a copy of that in the key, uh, clipboard and put that in here. White keys. Um, and then I guess I need to pass in the array. Uh, so this is going to be a color array, uh, which is the receiver of the colors. Call, call it that. So, um, uh, oh yeah, here. Keep, oh, I don't even, because it's a, it's a field. I can just refer to the field directly, so I don't even need to pass it in. There you go. Mm. So, um, why can I not rename this method? Oh, because I still have that parameter. There you go. Uh, assign key colors. There you go. So these are the white keys. And here I'm going to go key indices length. Uh, OK. Um, Ah, right, right. I want to change the range of... Okay, saturation is going to be the same in uh, either way, but the range of lightness. Okay, so I'm going to say min lightness and max lightness. Let's have these here. Float min, float max lightness, lightness, and uh, pass them in here. Okay. So that's for the white keys, and now for the black keys, which are keys number 1, 3, 6, 8, and 10, I'm going to have brightnesses straddling to 5, so from 0.2 to 0.3. Okay, somebody's making a lot of noise here. Oh, Rex, would you mind if you could, like, maybe mute? Um, actually, Mark Sam is making a bit of noise too. Uh, maybe everyone could mute unless you're saying something. I mean, um, okay, so that should be that. Um, okay, I probably missed something. Oh, yeah, there we go. I knew I missed something. Key indices dot length. Okay, anyone, anything to say? What language are you writing in? What language do you prefer to write modules in? Um, Unity uh, supports only one programming language, which is which is C sharp. So that is the language that we use. However, if I had a choice, I would also choose C sharp. C sharp is actually my favorite. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, According to C sharp, uh, I never knew that Go to exists in C sharp. It does. And, yes, ooh. I I only thought that that existed in the um, you know the .dot .bat format that you can create out of a simple text file. Okay, which is a little weird. So um, yeah, I can give you a little summary there. The C programming language had a go to command, uh, but this uh, and and it was carried over into C plus plus. And this go to command had a lot of um, problems with it. It was possible to jump back and forth in code in ways that doesn't make sense, in ways that you can corrupt variable values, you can corrupt, corrupt memory locations, you can have dang dangling po pointers and stuff like that. You can jump into the inside of a for loop, all of that. So because of that, go to itself was seen as bad and evil, and you should avoid it at all costs. That was the mantra for a long time. In fact, when the Java language was invented, they specifically added the go to keyword to the language and defined it to be always a compiler error. So you can never use go to. Okay, so Java does not actually have a go to feature. However, the designers of C Sharp realized that um, if you allow a specific subset of go to's that actually do make sense, so you cannot jump into the middle of a for loop or a skip over variable initialization or stuff like that, then go to is actually perfectly fine. It's actually no different from a for loop or a while loop or a break or a continue, especially break and continue. So um, this is what we have in C sharp. We have a sensible go to that does sensible things. And so using it is perfectly fine. Um, 
and um, there is no reason to avoid it, except, of course, in cases where using it is stupid. I mean, if, if your code is a loop in uh, sort of in logical terms, then you should really express it as a loop, a for loop or while loop. But in cases like the one that I'm using it, you know, it really is a sort of breakout, go back to the top. So that, that, that's really a go-to. So back to the code. I hope I've ranted about that enough. So here... <laughs> Let's see, keys, assign key, colors, keys, get confirm material, color. Okay, I'm not quite sure why only the black keys are getting the colors. You see that only the black keys are getting colored. I don't know why that is. Um, I think I'm also going to go to sleep right now. Okay, good night. Thank you for good watching. Night. See you around. Bye. So, yeah. Okay, so apparently only the uh, black keys one is actually... That, that is so strange. Why is that? Oh, the list of hues. No, no, I do want new list. And, um, it's very cool. There's some hues. Add you in here. Okay, I am a bit lost here. Um, let's see if anyone in the chat knows why this is happening. Um, hello, NotBoxHead. Um, I very much suspect that it's, it's mm, slightly more exp on the expert than on the diffuser, but the diffuser still has to, you know, identify the colors and what keys they map to, so it's, you know, it's not diffuse, it, I would say diffuser medium and expert Hard or maybe also medium. I think I think it's medium all around. Also high. Okay. So why why is it not working? Am I getting an exception that I'm not seeing? No, I'm not. Um, we have all the use for all the black keys. So why is this part not working? Um. Oh, it's because it returns false and ah, okay. So if not that, go to try everything again. If not, go to try everything again. Um, okay, except that at this point, yeah. I mean, once we have the colors for the white keys, we probably don't want to try them again. So I'm going to copy and paste this, but then this should really, this should really be part of the assign key colors part. So I'm actually going to put that in there, and um, let's do that, um, and then return false. So if not that, then return. If not that, return. Uh, this label is not being referenced. Right, that's because uh, here I want to go to try everything again, and that should be it. Okay, now let's hope. Yay, we have a super colored uh, wheel. Now, I'm a little unhappy with this because the dark colors are too dark. They are too hard to distinguish. I'm going to make them slightly lighter. And I'm also going to make the um, white keys lighter to compensate. So let's make this 0.4 to 0.5, perhaps. That should do. Ah, yes, that looks much better. Okay, maybe a bit more contrast. So let's change this to 0.9 to 1. Okay, that looks cool. Yes, I am happy with that. So. Awesome. Okay, we have two greens here, but I think they are distinguishable. This one is more lime, this one is more grass. We'll see. Okay, so these are the hues. Very good. Um, at this point, I suppose the hue can really be, um, uh, you know, you don't need all of these. Um, uh, decimal numbers. So uh, I'm gonna change this 
to to use only 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 two decimal points. It has decimal. You know what I mean. Decimal places. That's what they're called. Decimal places. And there we go. Maybe 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 I don't need decimal places at all because it's a number from zero to three sixty. Um. Yeah, I think that should be fine. There we go. Okay, and the cool thing is that the log file analyzer will be able to use that Q value to reconstruct the colors. So that's that's cool. Now I want the light in the middle. Well, first of all, I want all of the keys to have that uh, those colors. So I'm actually gonna set that plus twelve. So both sides get all of those colors. Come on. Oh, interesting. Index out of range. Yeah, because I'm stupid. This is what I should have done. Plus 12. There you go. Yes, there we go. Okay, now opposite keys are the same color. And okay, so now I need the colors in the middle to flash with the colors of the keys. So here we go. Um. Where is the coroutine? Co Start coroutine. Flashing is what it's called. So while it's not solved, we go through the flashing colors link. Okay, so at this point, flashing colors should really be because what I did here. Oh, what did I do here? Right. Uh, it select keys to press. Keys to press. Where did I assign keys to press? New in six. Okay, so I'm gonna redo this part. So now I'm not going to predetermine the keys to press and then express them. Instead, I'm going to predetermine the colors and then calculate the keys to press from it, which is the more, you know, the more typical way of doing this. So, um, let's see. Um, flashing colors. Do I want to reset the flashing colors at the start of each? Yeah, I probably do. So I'm actually going to move all of this. Um, into init stage here. Right. So curse stage equals stage. Set the status LEDs. The stage is three, then it's solved. Right. So here is where I want to place this. So flashing colors. Let's see. OK, so. Uh, there are um, there are twelve keys in an octave, and I want to shuffle them into random order. And apparently, I don't have the shuffle method. Is right. So I'm going to get the shuffle method from. I'm a bit surprised that it's not already in there. Let me see. I have join string and I have pick random, but not shuffle. I want shuffle. So I'm going to open Simon Sing Simon Sends, which is another module that I did earlier, and hopefully this one has a shuffle. There it is. This is my shuffle, 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 shuffle. Let's go back to Simon Sings, put shuffle in there, and now we have a list of numbers from zero to eleven which gets shuffled. And the first four of those are gonna be the ones that flash. So flashing colors, which is Oh. oh, okay. Flashing colors, which is a int array. There we go. Is going to be keys take four dot two array. So those are the four that are going to flash. Okay. Now, um, var bits equals list of bool because those four colors. Oh wait, we want to flash eight different colors, don't we? Because we have two different four digit numbers, the four binary digit numbers. So now we're going to calculate what they translate to. Here in our manual, Sam and Sings, we have the rules, which are here. I'm going to copy and paste them um, uh, into a comment like that. So, um, so for i equals zero to eight, well, let's let's say flashing colors length just in case I want to change this, but probably not. 
a uh, bit dot add no switch uh flashing colors i case zero which is c uh one if first or last digit or of number so bits dot add uh i equals zero or i equals three or i equals four or i equals seven break case one which is woo which is c sharp let me take a quick look at the chat to see if anyone said anything. Um, with just white keys or just black keys, the color scheme is fine, but balancing the difference between shades and hues might be difficult for some people. I do take your point. Uh, I guess we'll have to play test it. Um, but um, I mean, my thinking at the moment is that in the flashing colors, in the light in the middle, it'll be fairly obvious which ones are uh, light and which ones are dark. If it's not obvious enough, I can still tweak things. I could, for example, tweak the saturation, you know, so the, um, so that the, um, the bright colors are all kind of whitish, sort of, you know, very bright. But uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. So, bits dot add C sharp is one if second or third digit of number. So I equals one or I equals two or i equals 5, or i equals 6, break, case 2. Case 2 is d, which is one of the previous digit was 0. The previous, ah, oh. oh, right, if first digit, then one of the serial number is odd. So, bits dot add. So, if the serial number is odd, bomb dot get serial number numbers last percent to equal 0, then it's even, so it's odd. Um. All right, if it's the first digit, so i equals zero or i equals four, then it's that. Else, um, one of the previous digit was zero, so um, it's dot last. Uh, okay, it's just the, the opposite of this, so it's that. Break. Case three, D sharp. You know, I'm going to move this stuff there. There you go. Um, and I'm also going to do that. Okay, so D sharp. One if digit position in the number matches the number of port plates. Bits dot add. Um, I percent four, which is the position in the number, um, equals the number of port plates. Bomb dot port. Um, get port plate count. That's the one. Break case four. Now four is echo point. Um, one if the digit position in the number is equal to the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. If no port plates, one of the number. Of, okay, so bomb dot get port plate count equals zero. Then one of the number of batteries is odd. So bomb dot uh, battery count percent to not equal to zero else um digit position equal to the number of oh right so digit position is i percent four uh and we want to check if that is equal to uh bomb dot port plates get port plates dot max oh, max port plates dot length okay Someone in the chat will hopefully tell me if I got the logic wrong here. So if the port plate count is even, no, if it's zero, duh. Okay, so if there's no port plates, then we want to check if the battery count is odd. Odd, 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 does it say odd? Yes, odd, okay. Otherwise, check if the digit position and number, which is I percent four, is equal to the number of ports on the port plate. Yeah. That should be it. Chat, anything to say? Playtesting is good. Yep, yeah, I agree. Works right to me. Thank you. Okay, case five. F. Uh, bits dot add one if this is the third stage. So first stage equals two. Break. Case six. F sharp. Hang on. Uh, curse stage. Yep, yeah, we already said curse stage up there. Uh, F sharp. 
1 if the current stage number matches the number of letters in the serial number minus 1. So curse stage is equal to um, bomb dot letters in the serial number dot count. Now I'm going to go minus 2 because the current stage is 0 if it's stage number 1. So that's, uh, you know, off by one errors need to be cognizant of that. So let's see. G. 1 if the number's first color referred to a sharp or flat key. So sharp or flat keys are 1, 3, 6, 8, and 10. If any of them is equal to if the number's first color. Oh, oh, I see. Contains um, flashing colors. I minus I divided by four. No, 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 no. It's, oh, it's literally four times I divided by four. That's that's what it is, right? So, because I goes from zero to seven, so I divided by four is always zero or one. Zero if it's the first number, one if it's the second number. So, if we multiply that by four, we get either zero, which is the first number, the first first digit of the first number, or four, which is the first digit of the last number. So this is correct, except that if this is the first digit, then one of the number of indicators is odd. So I equals zero or I equals four. Then um, from that indicator count. Uh, get indicator and oh, there is no separate get indicator because I have to do that no um, is odd so not equal to zero else break case eight uh, G sharp um, let's see uh, G sharp one if the previous stage had any sharp or flat keys in it if first stage one of number of ports is on no, the previous stage so we need to know what the flashing colors for the previous stage were so, um, var prev flashing colors equals flashing colors, which will be null if this is the first stage, but that won't matter because we won't query it. Because if we're in the first stage, so curse stage equals zero, then number of ports is odd. So port count percent two is not zero. Um, this is wrong. This is wrong. The rule for G was number of indicators is odd, so that should be percent two. Thank you for noticing that. <clears throat> okay, Zakia, yeah, why would I do that? Well, because um, if, if you do just I, you still get a number from zero to seven. But what I want is I want either zero or four. See, because I as an integer, I divide by four is going to do an integer division and is going to truncate the uh, integer part and then going times four gets you a multiple of four um actually let me um let me show you this so if if you have the numbers like uh zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so if you were to divide all of these by four using integer division you get zero 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 and then starting at four you get one 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 and then two 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 etc and now if you times it by four again, you only ever get multiples of four, right? And this is what I want. Does that make sense? I'm going to read your response to that later. Um, I hope that explanation was uh, sufficient. I um, uh, don't need to save that. And I guess I don't really want that open either. So um, if the port count is odd, else one of the previous stage so pre flashing how they had any sharp flat keys in it so um uh so that dot any um key contains key break case nine which is alpha point uh bits dot add one if one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than two Okay, we do actually want the calculated numbers, so I'm going to declare me some new variables here, private int first number and private int second number. These are the two numbers 
Oh, wait. They're going to be in keys to press. Yeah. Except no, because the number can go all the way up to 15, but the keys to press can only go up to... Yeah, so I'm going to do that. First number, second number. And then um, where we have the pref flashing colors, we're going to say pref first equals first number, bar uh, pref second equals second number. There you go. Okay. And then I need to remember when I'm done with this, I'm going to need to remember to set first number to the correct value and second number also. Um, there we go. That way I will not forget. So one, if one of the numbers in the previous stage, so either first number or second number was less than two. So first number, sorry, prev first number less than two or prev second less than two. Except if we're in the first stage, uh, so if curve stage equals zero, then one of the number lit indicators, oop, there is a typo, uh, let indicate tours, there you go. So, uh, and number of under have the same parity. So if bomb.lit, uh, uh, on is what it's called, right? Get on indicators count, percent two equals bomb.off indicators count. Else it's that. Break. Um, let's see, why is it complaining? Operator, oh, count, parentheses. And I forgot the percent two. I keep forgetting a percent two. Please point it out to me when I forget that. Let's take another look at the chat. Integer division would give. Let's say the module stands for would give. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. Integer division. Could you modulo it by four as well, or is that different? Well, here's the thing. There is another way of achieving the same thing using modulo. Whoops. Let's. Um, oops. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10. Cause, so what I want, right, is I want this. Now, if I were to calculate the modulo, right, I get this, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then, you know, a re repetition of that. So what I can actually do is I can subtract those two. And then here, this would be 0. And from this point onward, they're all 4 apart, right? So 4 times i divided by 4 is actually the same as i minus i percent 4. Those two give you the same result. I'm going to leave that up uh, for a moment for some of you to think about. And um, OK, well, hopefully that should be enough. Going to go back to programming. Um, <laughs> so that was that. Case 10 is a sharp. Um, so one if another color in this number refers to C or C sharp. Um, in this number, so in your mobile dot range. Oh, okay. Goodbye. See you around. Okay. Is anyone still here? Because maybe I'm. Um, oh, you should stream more. Thank you. I, I, I like that. Um, so, select. Okay, I've already got the variable i, so let's call it um, n, I guess. I'm still um, here. Hello. Hey. Oh, that, that's uh, Zach. Hi, Zach. Okay. So, if another color in this number, so, um, let's see, I want n not equal to, um, hmm. Same thing as before, four times. No, 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 I want. Uh... Oh, it's I person four, duh. And. I guess I can do any. If any of the others refers to COC shops, so I want flashing colors um, N equals zero which is C or one which is C sharp. Um there's some in this number, right? So N uh plus four times I divided by four. So 
you know, I could actually just put that here and then have um, that. I think that might be a bit more easy to understand. So uh, the range now goes through the digits of the number that we're in, of which there are four, and checks only the ones that are not the same as the one we're looking at. And then it checks whether it's either zero or one under C or C sharp. I think this is correct. If anyone can see a mistake or error in that, please let me know. Bits.add one if this number would be prime if this digit were one. Now that's an interesting one. So um what's the current number? Um hmm. The problem is you have to calculate all the other bits first before you can calculate this one. That's a really interesting case. So actually, I have to delay 11 until afterwards, which means that for now I'm going to add a false, because um, I have to add something so that they all line up properly. But then if I have, oh, uh, oh yeah, but you can have only one of them at most. So at the end, um, so this does all of the eight digits, so, okay, so there are two numbers if, um, uh, oh god, if any of them is B, right, okay, so I'm, I think I'm just gonna uh, go through them again, like, like this, so, if, uh, flashing colors I equals 11, so at this point, we know all the other bits. And we need to fix this one. So, um, so um, cur number is equal to bits um, dot take. Okay, so I want to skip uh, the first number if I'm in the second number. So that's once again that's four times i over four. So I skip either zero or four numbers, and then I take four numbers from there. Um, dot uh, aggregate. I want to start with zero, and then I want to take the previous number, shift left it by one, and then or with either one or zero depending on n. And that hopefully gives me the correct number. Um, the first one is the most significant, it gets shifted left first. I think this should be right. So this gives me the four digit binary number. So um uh var now if the bit were set to one then it would be equal to cur number uh or one shift left uh i except it's i percent four because i i percent four is the position with in the oh no 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 it's um uh, three minus that because if if i is zero okay if i is zero then i percent four is zero we're in the first digit um the first digit is the most significant digit so we need to shift left three times so that's correct if we're in digit number three then this gives me a three minus three so it's zero okay i think this is correct so if the new number is prime, so the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. These are the only ones that can happen because it can only go up to 16. Uh, contains the new number, then um, bits uh, i equals true. Yeah. I think that's it. Right? Is that right? I think that is right. So now, um, hmm, yeah, okay. So at this point now we can cal ah, we can calculate the first number and the second number. Now the cal first number is of course uh, the first four bits like that. Why is it okay? And the second number is uh, the next four bits after that. Phew. Now, 
keys to press. Um, let's see. We have only two keys to press in this stage, but we have further keys to press from the previous stages. So I'm going to say at the start, at the start, 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 here at the start, we're going to uh, uh, initialize this with an empty array, and then we're just going to concatenate the new keys to press onto this. In fact, why don't I change this to a list? Um, so that I can easily add things. Okay, so now we're back here. So we have the first number with the second number. Now, keys to press. Um, that's right. So we, so if first number is less than 12, then uh, keys to press dot add. Uh, the number because if the number is zero, for example, we want C. If it's one, it's C sharp, etc. Else, we want to add the key that pertains to the flashing color. The fla the flashing color. Of this okay. So that would be flashing colors. Um, first number minus twelve. So first number is always 12, 13, 14, or 15. So this will give you 0, 1, 2, 3. So flashing, it gives, yeah, okay, that should be right. So now I can simplify this by using a uh, conditional operator there, and it's all a single line. And then the second one to press is, of course, the second number, if it's that. Otherwise, it's this, but then plus 4, because we want the other flashing colors. Now, I could simplify this, but you know what? For the sake of readability, I'm going to leave it. Now, keys to press. Oh, yeah. Duh. Just leave that. Um, ah, 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 ah. We need to check if the... Yeah, it says... Um, I'm going to move this to start just so that the log message uh, only happens once. Uh, so here, I'm going to log whether the serial number has or does not have a vowel. So, you know, start on the left or right. And then I'm going to make this a field. Uh, private bool, bool as well, let's put it there. Right. Okay. Now, um, has vowel was probably used here. So now we only need to change one of those key presses. So if it has a vowel, then um, hang on. If it has a vowel, um, dun -dun -dun -dun. that start on the left. Now the left keys are key zero to twelve. So if it has a vowel. Uh, we want to modify the second number. So I'm going to do this plus has vowel, then 0 else 12. And in the other case, we add has vowel 12 else 0. That should do it. That can go. Sub progress equals 0. Sub progress is the progress within the current stage because, you know, you have several keys to press, so it will. Um, Okay, flashing, okay, stage one, flashing colors correspond to keys. Uh, stage flashing colors join strings. So we want flashing colors select, color, key names, color, um, join string. And then the stage one solution equals, um, yep, for each stage we have two keys to press. We chain, we set key name. Ah, right. Keys to press gives you the key to press, which, yeah, because the key to press is going to be a number from 0 to 23. Um, flavor text is a crime. Discord can show when you... Okay, let me read all this. When do you stream? You might want to have Discord connected so people can find you easily. I probably want to... Okay. I am not getting the, oh, I am getting the purple circle, I think. Uh, it's showing up for me anyway. 
Um, oh my lord, that flavor text is a crime, so what's the flavor text? Oh, that one, yeah, yeah, um, Mario came up with that. Well, Mario came up with a different song, but I suggest that we could use that song, and then he modified it. Okay, um, kind of lost my train of thought now. Okay, so what I was going to explain here is that keys to press is going to be a number from 0 to 23, where 0 to 11 is the first octave, the left octave, and 12 to 23 is the right octave, right? So key name is a function which will take that uh, number and turn it into, you know, a string that is either like, for example, left C sharp or right alpha, whatever, right? So it uses the key name of the modulo, which is between 0 and 11, and then right or left, depending on whether it's, you know, you get the point. So, now that we've written that, let's start the module and see where it breaks horribly. And here we go, okay. As we can see, it's flashing only blue. That shouldn't surprise, because I didn't actually change the coroutine that does the flashing. Um, Nobody commented on that. Did anyone notice that? <laughs> so the material color. Oh, oh, wow, wow, wow. This is going to be colors, key colors, flashing colors, I. That should do it. This does not need to set it to white because this already does that. Haha. -ha. Let's see. Come on, there you go. Okay, here we have some interesting colors. Oh yes, this is working. Okay, now let's see if I can solve this module without looking at the log. I, I didn't look at the log, maybe some of you saw it, but I'm covering it up now. Let's see. Okay, here start. This color is uh, golf. Wow. This takes a lot of waiting. Okay, that is Foxtrot Sharp and then it was Alpha. This and this. Okay, so that was um, Alpha Sharp and Charlie. Did I miss it? Yeah, I missed it. Damn it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So that is that, that. That would be delta, delta sharp, and bravo. Delta, delta sharp, bravo. So, uh, yeah, let's look at the rules. Oops. We do have a bravo, which is the prime number rule. So that's cool. We get to test that already. Um, so, golf. Um, one, if the number's first color referred to a sharp or flat key. If first it, it is the first digit, so one of the number of indicators is odd. Now I need to look at the um uh, I need to look at the edge work here without seeing the solution. Okay, here is the edge work. Um Okay, what was the condition? <laughs> One of the number of indicators is odd. Let's see, we have one indicator, so that's the true. Foxtrot sharp. Um, one of current stage number, which is one, matches the number of letters. So we need two letters, but we have four letters, so no. A, alpha, one, if one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than two. The first stage, one of the number of lit indicators unlit indicators. No, we only have an unlit, so that's a no. A sharp. One of another color in this number refers to C or C sharp. Um, uh, oh yeah, wait, in this number. Well, no, this number consists of G, F sharp, A, and A sharp, so that's a no. So our first number is 8, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That would be golf sharp. Second number, Charlie. One if first or last digit of a number, that's a one. Delta. One if previous digit was zero, a no. Uh, delta sharp. Delta sharp is incorrect. If one, one if digit position in the number, which is three, matches the number of port plates. Let's see, we have a PS2 port plate, zero RCA, and another, we actually have three port plates exactly. 
finally be as the prime number rule. So let's see. Um, at the moment, this would be 10, but it could be made 11, which is a prime number. So we are going to make it a prime number. So this is 11, which is B. Um, so I'm going to press golf sharp and B. Um, the, uh, what was the criterion for left and right again? I forgot. Um, uh, start on the left if the serial number has a vowel. Okay, uh, the serial number has no vowel, so we start on the right. We press golf sharp and bravo. Um, okay, I'm probably going to see part of the solution now, but I don't care. I'm just not going to look at golf sharp. Uh, ding. I'm going to scroll down just to see if that was correct. That was correct. And bravo. Ding. That was wrong. Okay. Now, let's see if anyone in the chat can tell me why it was wrong. I'm going to give you a minute to respond. If any of you know why this was wrong, let me know. Of course, you can talk to me on Discord as well if you like. No answer yet. I don't even have the manual, lol. You didn't do the code for B, I think. Okay, the, the code for B? Okay, the rule for B is um, 1 if this number would be prime if this digit were 1. Our digits were 1, 0, 1, something. Now, if this is a 1, then this is 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. That is a prime, so it's a 1. So that gives us a B. Right. You made B return false. <gasps> Wait, what? Okay. Uh, mm, no. As you can see here, I actually set the bit to true if it is a prime number. So that's not it. Um. Yeah, no, that that's not it. Um, right, okay, well, let, let's see what it would have expected. Let's take a look at the log. It expected another G-sharp. Interesting. Now, G-sharp, I forgot to log the actual numbers, but G-sharp is uh, 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8. I get this one? No. Ah. If I got the rule for D sharp wrong, then that would explain it. D sharp one of digit position, which is three, matches the number of port plates. Let's see if we got that wrong. Um Ah yes, we did get this wrong. We did get this wrong. Because the position in the number Yep, this is this is the mistake. So let's exit play mode. This gives us a number between 0 and 3. But, you know, when we say position in the number, we perceive it as 1, 2, 4. So actually, I want to subtract 1 from this. And because this is likely not the only place, indeed. See, I made the same mistake here. Let's subtract 1 here and not there. Any, anywhere else? Nope. I think that's it. So that was the bug. Because now, um, you know, that would have been a 1, which means that this would have been either an 8 or a 9, right? So if we make this a 1, it would be a 9, which is not a prime number. So it's 0, which makes it 8. So the funny thing is, by the way, if all of these turn out 0, right? Um, wait, no, what am I talking about? Right, and this one turns out 1. No, wait, then that would make it 3. So actually, you can never actually get the answer 2. So yeah. But, but anyway, that's assuming that B is the last bit. Um, I'm rambling. Forget it. Let's put this back. This was actually a 0. That was actually a 0, making this 8, which was G sharp. OK. Now, let's try the same thing again. Um, 
this time I'm going to put the console uh, here so that I can actually sort of put it away and not see it. Here we go. Ready? Um, let's save this. Also, I noticed that this is not quite safe, so let's actually do that. But that doesn't make a difference, obviously. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So the first key is. Um, ooh, that was a delta. Ooh, and there was a alpha somewhere in it. That was a foxtrot followed by an echo, I think. Delta Foxtrot Echo. Let's see. Delta Foxtrot Echo. Yes. No, that's not Echo. That was Alpha. No, that was Bravo. DFB. Bravo. And then that is this. This. Okay, so I got lost. So that was Golf Alpha. Try that again. Come on, cycle. Okay. D, F, B, G, A. And then we have. Okay, I got the last two, which is uh, Golf Sharp and Foxtrot Sharp. So this one here is missing. Um, one, two, three, four, five. That one, that's a Charlie. B, F, G, B, G, A, C, G Sharp, F Sharp. That was not a G Sharp, that was a D Sharp. Hang on. Yeah, that is a D sharp. Hmm. So apparently, it is actually hard to tell. Um, yes, I think. Yeah, I think the colors are confusing. So maybe I do need to rethink the um, color palette. But for now, let's uh, try and solve this, shall we? So um, we have this equal delta. One of the previous zero is first digit one of serial numbers odd. Oh, I, I need to look at the log to see the serial number. So what I'm gonna do is this, and then scroll up, and there you go. I can see the hues, but I don't get. I don't worry about that. So now I can see the edge work. Okay, so um, serial number is odd. The serial number is in fact odd. So that's a one f. One if this is the third stage. And that's a no. B. One, oh, we don't know that yet. Golf. One of the numbers first color, which is D, uh, D refer to a sharp or flat D. That's a no. Which means that the number is either 8 or 10, neither of which is a prime number, so it's 8. A. One if one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than 2. We don't have a previous stage. One if number of lit indicates okay same parity. Um, we don't actually have any indicators, so zero zero. So it's a yes. C one if first or last digit of number no D sharp. One if digit position which is three matches the number of port plates. One two three four. We have four port plates, so no, it does not match F sharp. One if the current stage number, which is one, matches the number of letters minus one. Well, no, that would be a three. So that's a no. So that's also an eight, which means it's G sharp, G sharp. Now the serial number does not contain a vowel, so we start on the right. So let's press a G sharp and another G sharp. And then let's check. Yep, that was correct. We did not get a strike. So let's carry on. Second stage. So the first stage numbers were, uh, well, 8, 8. I'll just write it down like that. So the second stage. Here we go. White. That, that. Okay, so that would be A sharp and B. And then I need to cycle again. Oh, the last one was a C. Um, then we have that and that. That's delta sharp and that's alpha. One, two, three, four. Oops. Nope. I got that wrong, didn't I? One, two, three, four. No, I think that's right. And that, that, and that. So that would be golf foxtrot. So one last missing. That one. Uh, that was Charlie Sharp. Let me just check if the last one really is a Charlie. 
Yes, it is. Okay, very good. So, alpha shop. One, if another color in this number refers to C or C shop, that's a no. B, okay, we don't know that. A, one, if one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than two. It's not, it's eight and eight. So no. Delta shop. One, if the digit position in number, which is four, matches the number of port plates. We do have four port plates. So that's a one. So this number is either a one or a five. And five is a prime, so that's actually a five. So we have five. Now, golf. One of the numbers first color, which is golf, refer to a shop, so no. F. One if this is the third stage. Nope. C sharp. One if second or third digit of number. Yes, it is. And C one if first or last. So yes, so that's a three. Um. Uh, so this was golf, golf shop, golf shop. So we do actually need to press golf shop, golf shop again. Ding dong. Um, and then we press five. That's box trot and delta sharp. So box trot and delta sharp um, is here. Let's see if we got a strike. We did not get a strike. Yes. Okay, third and last stage. Here we go. Okay, the last two were B and A. Then we have Echo, and that was Foxtrot Sharp. And now I have to wait again. That was a B flat. A B, uh, A sharp is what I meant. And now I missed the rest. <laughs> now I have to cycle again. Okay, let's see. We have Echo, Foxtrot Sharp, and then that one that was a Delta Sharp, and uh, unfortunately I missed the rest. Three. That is this, and then. Charlie Sharp after that, and that's a golf. Charlie Sharp, and then that's Alpha Sharp, Bravo Alpha. Yep, I think that's correct. Echo. One if digit position, which is one, is equal to the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. No, yes! Serial and parallel, and the others are empty. So that's a yes! Foxtrot Sharp, one of current stage number matches the uh, stage three, matches the number of letters in this year. That is true. We have four letters X, Z, S, C. So that is true. Delta Sharp, digit position in the number, which is three, uh, matches the number of port plates, which is four. So no. Golf, uh, one of the numbers first color, which is Echo, refer to Sharp. So no. So that would be a 12, which means it's echo time. 12, it means first number that flashed, which is this one. So that's why it's echo. C sharp, uh, one if second or third, no, so no, alpha sharp. One if another color in this number refers to C or C sharp. Yes, the first one does. Oh, B is the, the, the um, prime number thing again, and then if one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than two, well, they were five and three, so that's a no. So again, just like before, this is either a four or a six. That's not the same as before, but anyway, it's a four. One, two, four, yep. So that's a four, which is four, that is echo. So we actually want to press golf sharp, golf sharp, um, foxtrot, uh, that, and then delta sharp, which is that, and then echo, echo. So echo and echo. Ladies and gentlemen, bomb diffused. I believe the module works. As you can see, it has stopped flashing. The stage lights are all on. And I'm guessing, yeah, click, clicking new buttons there doesn't do anything. So that's good. I think the first playable version is ready. Thank you all for watching. Um, this went to be the off state. Um, well, I did that because Mario wrote that in the manual, but now that we don't actually use black as one of the colors, I suppose it could be black to be the off state. I think that might actually be preferable.
Um, yeah. Okay, so regarding the colors, I think I'm gonna experiment a bit with um, making the, uh, the the white keys more saturated. And let's make this zero zero zero, which actually is the same as saying color dot black. No, I don't actually want it black. I want it kind of very dark. Uh, so let's make it point oh five point oh two zero. Let me let me just very quickly um, uh, uh, experiment with that. If I set this color here, um, so what did I just set it to? Um, 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. Okay, Here's 0 0.05 uh, times 0 0.02 and zero. That is too dark. That is too dark. This is possibly. I think I want to make it less saturated, like this. You know, I already have these off LEDs. I could actually just use that color. But they are a bit. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I quite like this color. Um, maybe a little more, little something like this. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna copy and paste this, and I'm gonna set the uh, status LEDs um, um, in its stage. Sets them here. Oh, I actually have the unlit material for that. Let me put the console back to where I'm used to it. Um, I have this LED unlit material, so I'm going to actually put the color in there like that. That looks a bit more like an off LED, doesn't it? I still think it should probably be a little less saturated. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay, let's, let's do it like that. Put that color, put it here as well. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, much better. Yeah, I like that a lot. So, in flashing, I'm going to uh, set the color to essentially this. So it's um, uh, OX27 divided by 255, OX22 divided by 255, OX1E divided by 255. There you go. Okay. Um, what else was I going to do? Ah, yeah, white to be the off state. Um, oh yeah, I, I did, I did that. So let's run this and see what that looks like. I think this might actually be more manageable, yeah. So let's have black be the off state. Okay, yeah, now I remember I wanted the uh, key colors to be more saturated. So let's see, um... Uh, equals new color, uh, new color, no, where, where do I set the color, um, um, is it in, uh, key, key color, key color, key colors, there we go, um, I set that here, no, key color, there we go, ah, this is why, okay, uh, hue saturation, oh, um, so it, does right. I wanted it less saturated, so let's make it 0.5 to 0.7 and see what happens. Could not generate colors for the puzzle. Oops, that is not supposed to happen. Okay, well there we go. This this looks. Mm, and there are there are two colors here that are very similar. Hmm. Maybe the, maybe it does need more saturation than that. So let's make it between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Although I strongly suspect that it will, I will need to use 0 0.9 at the end. Oh, actually, this is not too shabby. Let's try it again. Run it again. That's also not too shabby. Let's run it again. And that's also not too shabby. Right. And that's also not too shabby. 
Okay, so the issue now is that it did at one point say that it couldn't find a color combination. Um, I want to output in the log how many tries it actually took. So um, log format, uh, Simon Sings, uh, tries one module ID and num total tries. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using angle brackets here instead of square brackets, well, that is my strategy for creating log messages, which will appear in the filtered log, but not in the log file analyzer, because, you know, this is just debug messages. So that's the best way to do that, in my opinion. So, let's see. Um, only two tries. But previously it gave up a thousand tries. Still only two. One. How could it have given up after a thousand tries earlier? Hmm. Um, all that I changed, I did not actually change any of this code. All that I changed was this, which doesn't factor into the uh, calculation, does it? It tries 10 times to find something, and if it doesn't find any, it goes to here and total tries which starts at zero. Thousand tries. That is so strange that it would usually manage. Ooh, there was oh there was a two hundred seventy and now it's one hundred and ninety. Suddenly the numbers. Oh, there is a tries one. There is a tr oh it use it needs only one try for the black keys, but it needs quite a few for the white keys. Um, yeah, nobody noticed that. Nobody commented. On that in the chat. Um, okay, so 192, that sounds. Oh, 977, that one got really close. Oh. So, question now is do I increase the number of maximum uh, iterations? You know, maybe I should just. Yeah, maybe I should just take the, these U's right here and use that as a default for when it fails. How about that? Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, um, let's see, 35, 288, 234, um, 339, 85, 85, uh, 131, 185. That's the white keys. And for the black keys, 359, 46, 120, 311, and 175. So, now I'm not going to return uh, true or false anymore. Instead, here I'm going to say, um, uh, for in i equals 0 to key indices dot length. Uh, key colors. Oh. Right, let's do that. Um, use is equal to uh, defaults, which is going to be a, uh, a float array default, default use, let's call it that. Default use. And then go to done, I guess. I'll just jump to here. Um, oh, that's right, because use is a list. So I, I guess I, I do want it to be an array. So I'm sorry. Let's just take a copy of it. Oh, wait, wait. No, I can do this. Ah, that way I don't need to instantiate a new list. I can just put that in. Yeah. You know, while I'm at it, since I don't want to instantiate new lists all the time, let's instantiate one list at the start, and then here, just clear it. Haha, uh -huh, there you go. That's easy. And now, when I call this function, which I do here, I want to uh, have the these default queues, and then here, I want these default queues. And 
it just occurred to me that because they're all integers, it makes it the wrong type. So there you go. Uh, yeah, not all code paths return a value because none of them do. There you go. Also, this is private. And then we've got lowercase. Um, so now, whoops. What happened? Ooh. Um. Ah. Okay. Ah. Right. 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 Yeah, so now this will always succeed, even if it uses the defaults. So, we don't need that anymore. There you go. I think that should work. Boing. There you go. Okay, so now that I don't log the number of tries anymore, you know, I, I don't know what what's going on. But I'm fairly confident that this, this is going to work. Because the, um, yeah. So, that's it. Um, make sure not to auto solve. Oh, make sure not to auto solve the module. Um, ah, thank you, Kate. I did miss that. This is the first time someone in the chat comments on something that I actually. Forgot, thank you very much. Um, and I also don't need that log message now, so. Um, there we go. Okay. I think I'm happy with this. Um, you're not supposed to be a coding genius, you're just supposed to, you know, find all my mistakes. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, where do we go from here? I mean, the next thing I would ordinarily do is, um, you know, put this on the workshop, friends only. In fact, let's do that, shall we? Let's put it on the workshop and keep it friends only, and have people, oh, oh, I haven't even finished the manual yet. So, let's let's actually write the manual. So, we don't need this anymore. Um, let's see if I have um Oh, haha, <laughs> since I have my new internet connection, the router does not port forward this port anymore. So, I'm going to have to set that up later. In the meantime, I will use local host. Simon Sings doesn't exist yet. So um, let's use um, Simon Sings and save it as Simon Sings. Replace all the sends with Sings. Six occurrences replaced. Um, and let's get rid of this bit. Let's get rid of. Um, uh, yeah, here is the flavor text, dot, 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 and then let's remove all of this. This is the first page, and then all of this. This is the second page. And I need to minify all of this SVG in Simon Sins. Please remind me of that before I publish Simon Sins. But here we go. This is Simon Sings. So reload this, and Simon Sings is now there. Here we go. I want to start with the SVG, to be honest. But you guys will find that boring, so I, I shan't. Uh, <laughs> so here's the uh, flavors text. Let's put that in here. Boink. Um, let's just do it like that. There you go. Full stop. Um, let's copy and paste all of that. And this is an unordered list. Slash li. That goes here, 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 and here. Here. And boink, 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 boink. Slash ul. Whoop, Did not mean to do that. Okay. Um, did not mean to reload that. I want to reload that. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Um. The next thing is, oh yeah, table one, okay. 
And by the way, I, I haven't forgotten that I need to rephrase this. I will do that afterwards. Table. TR slash TR. No. Uh, what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, THC. THTD slash TD. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Okay. Boink. Um, this is, the no, this, this phrasing can be a bit clearer. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put in the earlier text that is going to be one if it's true and zero if it's false. So, so I can just put a Boolean condition. So I'm going to say this is the uh, first or last digit of the four digit binary number. There you go. This is the second or third digit of the four digit binary number. D, um, the previous digit was zero. Um, if this is the first digit, um, ah, previous digit. It doesn't say previous digit in the same number, and it doesn't say first digit in the same number. So let me see what I did here. Aha, I did actually interpret it as first digit of the number. I'm going to change that. Boink. So that if it's the first digit of the second number, you're actually looking at the last digit of the first number. So if this is the first of the eight digits, um, the last digit of the serial number is odd. Otherwise, the previous digit was zero. D Delta sharp one if digit position in the number matches the number of port plates. Yeah, I think I can copy that verbatim. Verbatim, verbatim. How do you pronounce this? Please tell me in the chat. Is it verbatim or verbatim? Actually, why do I ask you? I can just put that up here. Um, here we go. Verbatim. Thank you. Um, the position of this digit in the number, in the four digit number, matches the number of four plates. There you go. Um, yeah, the position of this digit in the four digit number matches the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports. Um, on it. Um, If there are no port plates, uh, there is an odd number of batteries. Otherwise, the position of this digit in the four digit number matches the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. I love that condition. That is awesome. Um, F, is it, <laughs> uh, we are in the third stage. Of the of, of the module, whoops. Uh, F sharp. Um, F sharp. If one if current stage number matches the number of legends this year, yeah, I can probably copy that too. Um, the current stage number matches the number of letters in the serial number minus one. Bingo. G. Um, yeah. Um, okay, if this is, okay, if this is the first digit in its four digit binary number, yeah, I suppose it should be its, shouldn't it? If this is the first digit of its, in its, in its. 
four digit binary number. Um, oh, we're here. Um, number of in right. The number of indicators is an oh, no, there is an odd number of indicators. Otherwise, okay. Let's see if anyone commented on this. Nope, no one did. Um, this number's first digit um, referred to a yeah first color. First, uh, okay, refer to a uh, sharp flat key. Next one. If uh, we are in the first stage, then a uh, number of ports is odd. There is an odd number of ports. Otherwise, um, previous stage had an, ah, the, um, any of the colors flashing in the previous stage referred to a sharp flat key. Yes, I think that is what we meant. Uh, then A, one of the number, okay, so first of all, if we're in the first stage, if we are in the first stage, stage, not sage, stage. Did anyone notice that? Nope, nobody noticed that. Um, we're in the first stage. Hang on, we're looking at A. Yes, so it's this. A uh, number of lit indicators. Ah, yes. The number of lit and un okay, lit indicators and the number of unlit indicators have the same parity. I suppose I could add a footnote for that. Um, but for now, let, let's just see if it fits on the page even. Uh, one of the numbers in the previous stage was less than two. Otherwise, one of the um, four, four digit, um, one of the four, okay, one of the four digit numbers in the previous stage stage was less than two. A sharp, another calendar's number. Um, four digit number. Hmm, just occurred to me that one of the numbers is less than two. That is exactly the same as saying it's C or C sharp. It's not the same as a color within the number, but you know, so maybe instead of C or C sharp, I'm gonna change it to F or F sharp just to, um, just to mix it up. So A sharp. Okay, so C. Uh, D, E, F. F is five and F sharp is six. Is that correct? Um, right. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yep, that is correct. A sharp. Uh, B. Right. Okay. Um. This. Uh. Hmm. This digit's number would be a prime number if this digit were one. Or should it say if this digit is one? Let's see if anyone has any comments on that. Let me know in the chat. Um, assuming anyone is still watching, I don't even know. I can't even tell who's on the stream. I know that Chatty shows this list of people, but it doesn't know when people leave, so I don't know if these people are all still there. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's reload that. And that's what I suspected. It's too long for the page, isn't it? Yep, the page is too long. Um, yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy to um, shorten this. So, 
I don't know, may maybe I'll put it on the second page. Let's see what else needs to be on the second page. On the second page, we only have this table and the diagram with the keys. So, um, yeah, let's let's first um, trans transfer the table. Um, also, let's put table one here. And then we have table two here. Okay, let's see, we have th, um, d, d, d is digit, uh, d, decimal, that's what it is, decimal. Um, it doesn't really need the decimals, doesn't it? It only needs the ones and zeros. So actually, I'm just going to omit that and have only the binary. And then this is, uh, I don't know, meaning. Um, and we have three of those, slash tr. Let's scroll down a bit. tr, td. So if the binary is 0, 0, 0, 0, then the meaning is c. Right. If the binary is uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, then the meaning is f sharp. And if it's one one zero zero, then it's um, um, key corresponding to the first color in this number. That is a bit verbose. I'll I'll have to check if that still fits. So now we want one two three four five copies of that, and then we change this to one 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 one. One nope that that's wrong. It should be that 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 that, and then this is uh, that that and that, right? And these go away. These go away. And here I'm going to say um um. I usually call them corner to say that, you know, they should be invisible. So let's do that. Let's say uh, style, uh, table, border none, td.corner, border none. And let's reload this. And here's our table. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, C, C sharp, D, D sharp E F. You know, I have three columns and it's 16, so it's not divisible by three, so this is the best we can do. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. There we go. I suppose I can put key here to make this a bit more compact. There we go. I think I want to shorten this as well. Uh, whoops. Um, first color in this number. First, um, first key. Okay. Second, third, fourth. First key in this number. Is that clear? Mm. See if anyone responded. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Space Crew. I appreciate your custom. Okay. Um, so now let's let's look at the phrasing. This module consists of a round piano board. Board is it called a piano board? Piano, piano board. I'm gonna keep it because it, it was written by a native speaker, and I'm not sure. With the usual white keys. Um, yeah with the keys colored with with colored keys with, <laughs> with colored keys uh there's also a flashing light in the center that blinks uh some of those colors of the keys ah uh, that made it one line longer 
This module consists of a run piano board with colored keys. There's also a light in the center of the module that flashes in the colors of the keys. That flashes the colors of the keys. So the color of some some of the keys. Yep, that still fits. Uh, the light. Okay, the light uh, flashes eight. Oh, no, okay, that's eight blinks. Uh, or shows. No. Sequences? No. It, um. I'll keep blinks. The light blinks eight colors, each of which translates to binary digit according to table one below. Each group of four constitutes one four digit binary number. Um, black indicates a space between between repetitions of the eight digits because it doesn't actually have a pause between the two numbers, only between repetitions of all eight. Um, the module consists of three stages where each stage shows two different binary numbers. Well, we've already stated that there are two binary numbers. The module consists of three stages. Um, in each stage, the two binary numbers point to two new piano keys to press. I think I want to write that out. Two, three. Uh, in each stage, press the keys from the previous stages plus the new ones, I guess. Um, okay, the module consists of three stages. Stage the two binary numbers, point to two new key piano keys to press. See table two. Right. Okay, the light blinks eight colors, each of which translates to a binary digital point. Okay, the light blinks eight colors. Um, associate the these colors with. Uh, no. Identify um, which key has which keys have these colors and translate them. To a to binary digit to binary digits according to table one below. Each group of four constitutes one four digit binary number. Um, I can use black. Right. I'm just gonna. Put this part here. The light blinks eight colors. Black indicates a space between repetitions. The light uh, cycles a sequence of eight colors. Cycles through a sequence of eight colors. Black indicates a space between repetitions. Identify which piano keys. Uh, have these colors and translate them to binary digits according to table one below. Uh, each group of four consists of four. Yeah, the module consists of three stages. In each stage, the two binary numbers point to two new piano keys to press according to table two. In each stage, press the keys from the previous stages plus the new ones. The keyboard has two octaves: one on the left half of the wheel and the other on the right. The note to press. Is on the other side. Okay. Um, each note to press is on the up on the other side from the previous from the previous. Um, I'm gonna say each key just just for the purpose just for the benefit of people who don't know that you know keys are notes because uh, not everyone's a music genius. Am I right, Zach? Uh, start on the left if the serial number has a vowel, and on the right, otherwise. Mm. 
yeah, I think this is not necessary anymore. So there you go. Um, still doesn't fit on the page. Um, and unfortunately, table two requires some um, explanation regarding this because it's still not clear. If anyone has any ideas how to make that clearer, I'm all ears. Uh, space crew, I haven't published Simon Sins yet because I didn't have internet for seven days. I only got it back today at a time when Simon Sings was already nearly done. So I decided to do the stream first to, to you know, to um, stream the interesting bits and then I can just publish both uh, modules together. Okay? So, mm, still need to think about how to, how to phrase this. Um, Let me see what this looks like when I print it. Um, Simon Sings. Yeah, it is clearly far too much for the. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see. Um, I think I want to. Um, okay, first of all, let's go here. Piano keys. Piano keys, piano keys has this graphic, which I'm just gonna reuse. Um, so I'm just gonna take that address for Simon Sings and put a IMG source there, like that, and uh, just call it um, a keynote chart or something like that. There we go. Okay, it it seems that I, I won't be able to escape splitting the table. That's the only way to fit it on two pages, right? Um, yeah, um, I'm still really unhappy with the phrasing in this column. Any suggestions are welcome. Um, Please let me know if you have any ideas. Let me reread this. This module consists of running light cycles through a sequence of eight colors, black indicates the space between repetitions. Identify which piano keys have three have these colors and translate them to binary digits according to table one below. Each group of four constitutes one four digit binary number. The module consists of three stages. In each stage, the two binary numbers point to two new piano keys to press according to table two. In each stage, press the keys from the previous stages plus the new one. So in the two binary numbers point to two new piano keys to press according to table two. Now here it says first key in this number. I think this might be clear enough. Um, um, yeah, okay, I'm going to leave it like this and just see if anyone ever complains. If it's clear to everyone, then no need to worry. Now I need to... Um, so before I do the splitting up of the table, I'm going to create the SVG for the corner because you can see that the text um, wrapping, you know, is different when Chrome. See, Firefox actually puts a sort of empty frame there and wraps the text correctly, but Chrome doesn't do that. So I'm going to fire up Inkscape and I'm going to start to um, design this, and this is going to take a while. So any of you who don't want to see this, you are welcome to, uh, but um, I don't know, some things that is G. We'll see. I'm going to start with a grid. Let's put a grid here, size 10, 10 or something. And, or do I need a grid? I guess I don't really need a grid. Uh, what I kind of need a circular grid. It would help if I had a circular grid. You know what? This might be easiest to do if I don't do it in Inkscape. I could write it in SVG, but no, I can't use 
I can't use the rotation transform on the individual vertices inside a path. So that's kind of annoying. Um, I think I know what I'll do. Um, let's, let's just try this. I'm, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to do a circle, which is like this. I can still make this bigger later, so I'm not too worried if it doesn't fill the whole space yet. Um, give that a stroke. Yeah, give it a stroke. Um, and I notice I actually want the top to be on a grid line. So I'm going to do this again and make it one larger. Huh? Why is there no stroke now? Oh, it's zero for some reason. Somebody set it to zero. Okay. Um, now. I'm... <sighs> I'm going to have a line from the center, which is here. And I want that line to have a stroke and no fill. Thank you. And maybe set that to two. And now I'm going to have another copy of that line. And this other copy, I want to rotate about this point down here. And I want to rotate it. Well, uh, one circle is 360, but one octave is 180. And we have 12 keys in an octave, but actually only seven. Um, yeah, it's only seven because we, we're doing the white keys first. So this is <laughs> the number of degrees I have to rotate it. I'm going to round this to 25.71. 25.71, boink. Okay, and now I want to do that seven times. Um, that there. Hello? Oh, come on. Please put it there, thank you. And uh, click, click. I suppose, actually, I can copy all of this, put it in the same place, and just do this. Aha! This is working better than I expected. And now let's take a few more copies of these. There you go. Boink, 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 boink. And now I have one whole octave. At least I think I do. I mean, this this looks reasonably close to vertical, so I'm, I'm gonna go with this. Um, now, how big is the center circle relative to the outer circle? I could look at the source code for the modeling, but uh, actually I'm just gonna use a ruler and hold it against my screen, which you guys won't be able to see. And, um, what you also can't see is that I'm struggling to find the ruler, but I found it now. So the radio, the outer radius is eight, and the inner radius one point five centimeters. Eight and one point five. So that means I'm just gonna copy this circle and then scale it. Uh, I want to divide by 8 and times 1.5, so it's uh, 1.5 by 8, so it's 18.75. 18.75, proportionally apply. There we go. Whew. Okay, so that would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Yeah, just making sure I'm not getting something horribly wrong. Now I'm going to fill this here with some sort of middle gray because, uh, you know, that, that's where the light is. So there we go. Um, oh, totally didn't occur to me that I will have to cut out the protruding bit there. So um, to save myself that effort, I'm just going to 
cheat and uh, put this here. I have something wrong. Okay, what, what am I doing wrong? Oh, that's what I'm doing. Put that here. There. That's what I want. So let's delete this and delete this and change the filling here to. No, I want no filling. Thank you. Okay, so that's more like it. And now I want the black keys. Well, and I also want a you know 180 rotation of that, but I'll I'll uh, take care of that in a second. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quote unquote black key here, which doesn't really exist, and scale it um, approximately 75% horizontally, but not vertically. Uh, that should be 100 then. And um, I don't want this modification to affect the uh, stroke, thank you, because otherwise that would be uh, whatever. Um, it's going to be black anyway, so there. Now, I'm going to take that. I'm going to make uh, five copies of that, right? One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to rotate them all about the center. So rotate, uh, click. This one, uh, click, click, then this one, click, 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 and then this one, click, 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 and then finally that one, click, 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 and I can get rid of that. Okay, now all of those look weird. Why do they look weird? Ah, they look weird because they don't curve inward. So I'm actually going to redo that. Um, let's delete all these copies and here we are. Now I'm going to modify this. Um, let's change that into a curve and let's actually do that. Does that look right? Um, well, let's just try it, shall we? So I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five copies and rotate them. One, two, three, one, oops, one, chup, 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 chup. There we go. That looks much more like it, doesn't it? Okay. I think we are getting somewhere. Let's see what the chat has to say. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Remember, I don't see the uh, chat the whole time. It would be cool if you know if if chatty can i can i configure chatty to sort of flash the uh, taskbar icon when the new message arrives um there must be a way to do that 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 would be one of the most uh basic features of a uh settings oh lot so many settings uh highlight um no i don't want highlight i want notification notifications events plus stream status high chat message Channel, Emily Kirby, um, trigger only on messages containing bits? No, all of them. Status, enable, color presets, don't care. Um, sound, I suppose I could have some sound enabled. Um, file, ding, can I play that? Ah, oh, very good, yeah, I like that. Maybe a little bigger. Okay, that's a bit much. 25. Yeah, that's still a bit much. Yeah, maybe a little fine. Um so but can I have it flash the the taskbar icon? That's the question. Apparently not. Unless this is talking a about a desktop notification, which would let's see that. Oh, this is what it would be like. Ha 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 
Um, let's change this to something nice. Um, yeah, that one's nice. Um, ah, ah, I can use this. Oh, this is awesome. Let's do that. Uh, let's do that. Ah, I love that. This is cool. This is the correct color. This is absolutely the correct color. Uh, may maybe a maybe a bit um brighter still. Um maybe a bit bluer. Yeah. No, do have it saturated. Uh yeah, that that is perfect. I want that. Save. Um save. Okay, now someone please send a message so I can test it. There we go. Testing the notification. Wait a second. That was not what it said in the notification. Send me another notification. Send me another message, please, just so I can see what's in in the notification. In the meantime, I will do this. Get rid of that. Take all of that except that. And take a copy of it. And then rotate it about the midpoint what is the right place that is the right place and uh, rotate it 180 degrees boink whoops oh okay that's why let's just put that on right there you go okay now i didn't look at the notification damn it <laughs> I'm sorry, can you please send me another one? Uh, let's also put that here so I can just do that. Testing again this time without emote. Yeah, please try it again. In the meantime, I will do... Uh, I will do this. Sorry for all the spam. Yeah, okay, so that's good. That is the message I was hoping to get. So thank you, Kate. Uh, no worries. Worries. We are looking for spam here, aren't we? So now I'm going to draw a line here. Uh, have it not fill, but stroke. Have it stroke five or something. Now nah, maybe five is three. And then put a little circle here. Maybe also three, I don't know. And then let's group those and take two copies of it. Two. Right, and then this one we put here. And now I'm going to rotate it the same amount as what I rotated these, which is 36, 48.5, and 61. Don't ask me why, but I do know why. <sighs> and you'll never find out. 61. Um, Uh, 48.5. Uh, apply. Oh. 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 Right. Okay. Do that. And that's still there. Okay, click. And then that. That's still there. And the last one is, uh, 36. 36. Boink. Hey, and now I have to, um, yeah, let's take all except that, that, and group it. Come on, thank you. And then we can just move it. Well, actually, I could have moved it without grouping it, but I wanted to group it. In fact, why don't I arrange it relative to the page centered? Haha. <laughs> um, no, not that that's important, but it looks good. Um, no, actually, I don't think I want that. I think I want this to go here. I think this is good. I think this is what I'm going to keep it as. Save. Now, let's go. Uh, I'm Jay Component. Simon Sings. Copy that into this website. Paste it here. Copy that. And bang, everything is much smaller. 
and we have some attributes here which we don't need so we get rid of those point and then we can paste that again and it gets even smaller point uh style marker none yeah we probably don't need that either so get, get rid of that um fill silver yeah okay that's fine um i think that's the only one i want to remove so let's paste that again point copy and smaller again Okay, here we go. This is our Simon Sings SVG. Boink! We've done it. Read it. Okay, so now that uh, Chrome shows me what fits and what doesn't, I'm going to put part of table 1 onto the second page. So, whoops, let's do this. Simon Sings. So, I'm going to put that table here and remove everything up to G and then here everything from G onwards. There we go. Boink. Okay, that's a bit much. So let's move G and G sharp here. Boink. Okay, let's look at the print preview. That is looking good. It's a shame that it doesn't fit on one uh, page. I mean, in theory, I suppose I could put one of the bullet points on the other page instead. But no. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Also, there is a lot of space on the bottom, so I am tempted to actually move um G sharp down to the second page and then have have some spacing here in the bulleted list. So I'm gonna do L I uh margin point five EM zero poink. Let's make it a bit more point six poink. Yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Uh, maybe a bit more again. Boink. Yeah, that's even better. There we go. Okay, I think the uh, margin on these headers could be bigger. So H3, let's do... Uh, let me actually see what they currently are. They are 100. Zero, zero. So I want the top margin to be maybe 1.5, and then the bottom one could be 0.5. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. And it all fits perfectly on the page. That is awesome. Okay, page 1 or 2, page 2 of 2. Okay. I think we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the module. So, someone in the chat is probably going to point out that I missed something important. I'm going to give you a few moments to do so. If you can think of something that is still missing. If not, then that is... The, yeah, so let, let's generate the PDF. Um, Simon Sings, PDF, there we go. Let's um, go to... Haha, <laughs> here you can still see the IP address stuff I did to, to um, debug my internet connection when I got it. Anyway, um, update manual. All that is missing is the Steam Workshop publication. That is correct. So I want Simon Sings, Simon Sings, boink. That copy is the manual from the um, Katain content repo into the... Uh, Actually, there is one more thing that is missing. Testing it in the game. And when I test it in the game, also create a screenshot of it, which I want to use as the uh, preview image. So, let's... Ooh, we did not actually mark Simon Singh's module as mod.bundle. Ah, so, let's build this. Building, building, building. Building, 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 building. And then while it's building, I suppose, oh, come on, shit, okay. Uh, let's go here. Um, now that I'm online again, I can delete all of this. These are all the Steam Workshop uh, subscriptions, which I, you know, I can get through Steam again, now that I have an internet again. Uh, here's Simon Singh. So I'm going to move everything except Simon Singh's and camera zoom to another folder, TMP mods, move it here. Um, so that this one contains only those two, and then I run Katane, and hopefully, 
hopefully get a good example of the uh, module. So let's run an 11 module bomb. Here we go. Click. I have no idea if you guys can hear the game sound. I, I literally don't know. Uh, you'll have to tell me afterwards, or maybe tell me now in the chat. Ooh, that is hmm, that is actually pretty dense. That is denser than I expected. So you have to be quite quite accurate with your key presses. But anyway, hmm, I wanted that yellow there. Oh, magenta. No, I don't really like magenta. I like the purple. Oh, blue. There we go. We have a blue. Uh, no game sounds. Ooh, that is a shame. Let's take a look at this how about now can you hear the game sounds now i think you should be able to hear them now because if you can loud and clear thank you very good okay so we we've got a preview image here we go and, whoa i actually pressed something okay now i'm gonna take a screenshot of this entire bomb Okay, yeah, now, now it would be nice to not have those notifications, there you go. Um, let's take a screenshot of all of this. Copy to clipboard, open that here, close Ktain. So, I'm going to... Uh, I want to make this a square, and I usually make it... Um, ooh, I usually make it 800 by 800 pixels, but this one's much smaller. I guess I didn't zoom in enough. Well... I already entered, uh, exited the game, so I don't care. I'm gonna make it 450 by 450 pixels. There you go. Um, point. Nope. I meant. Uh, what's the shortcut? It's uh, X. Is that? There you go. Control Shift X. I'm gonna save that as. Oh, I'm still in the Marvel school directory. Um, Simon Singh's assets. Um, miscellaneous. There is a preview image png save it as that and save the other one as preview image 2 there we go and then we go in there whoops assets miss and we use png crush to make these much smaller you you will have seen it was 211 kilobytes and after this PNG crush, it will be 33% smaller, so 66%, which is about 140. That's quite a difference. So um, this one I'm going to upload later. So for now, let's uh, compile this, complete with manual and everything, open this. Ooh, Steam is not running. That is true, because I exited it when uh, the connection was not... Uh, there you go. So I'm... I'm gonna have to wait for this, unfortunately. I suppose in the meantime, this can hmm, crush the other picture. Why does Steam take so long? Verify installation. That shouldn't take long, should it? Um, connecting Steam account. Thank you, that is what I want. I do not want this window, so I'm going to close that. Let's open this. And there we go, Simon Singh. Um, um, a, um, certainly a colored piano if I ever saw one. I don't know. I just thought of something randomly. Uh, first playable version. Um, Updating Steam. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, create a new workshop item and publish to Steam. So here is the code. Now I know that this uh, workshop item thingy sometimes has this bug where it loses the uh, uh, Steam IDs. So I'm gonna write that down here. And I'm on I'm also going to open Simon Sin. Hmm. Knew it. I knew it. See, it didn't save the ID. I knew it. Good thing I wrote it down. Boink. Thank you. That was that. 
Now, as for Simon Sends, I believe the SVG for Simon Sends is uh, done, but it's not minimized because I didn't have int. So I'm gonna do that. Sorry, minified is the correct term. So let's copy that. Let's remove uh, all of these and all of these. There wasn't much of that, was there? <laughs> I'm still gonna do this though. Boink. 100%. So that doesn't make a difference, but it's it's nice and simple, right? It's only like four lines, so that's cool. Um, so as I'm, let me make absolutely sure that I have the correct manual for Simon Sends. This one, and let's recompile this. Mm -hmm. I hate that Steam green bar that says is yes, yes. I hate it. Too. It keeps you know you can verify your email address as much as you want. It just keeps happening. It just keeps coming. Uh, so uh, where were we? Oh, that's right. I wanted to put this up on a uh, thing. I don't have a preview image. Of course I don't. Let's open Katane. Boink. I forgot to take Simon's, Simon's things out. There you go. Yeah, that's right. It it asks you is your is that still your email address? But what it really means is, do you want to verify that this is still your email address? Hmm. Hey, here's a Simon Sen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Simon Sen. Bingo! I got a blue one. Yay! Okay, this time I'm gonna make a big picture, copy the clipboard, and I only need one. So, um... Let's make this 760 by 760. Who cares? It's just a preview. Let's uh, do that. And save that. In... Simon Sin. Haha. Overwrite that. Yes, uh, cd Simon sends assets miss png crf preview image png. This is going to take a moment. So, how's the family? <laughs> hmm? Still crocheting? Hmm? Yeah. I'm gonna um, pour myself a drink. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I know that the PNG cross is finished. Oops, I did not want to open that. I want to open this. Let's reload this, and there's our preview image. Really good, Simon sends. Um. The preview image can ah right right yeah haha first playable version okay here's another pet annoyance of mine I have to close and reopen this because the submit button is sometimes grayed out so let's do that and let's take that um we should do a stream like this again sometime um well I can only do it if I'm working on a module. Right. Um, I suppose what I could do is I could stream myself working on uh, TP support for Royals modules because you know I was going to um, put that into Twitch Plays so that we don't need to wait for him to put it on GitHub. So let's take a copy of that number, and uh, I guess I'm gonna exit. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna exit this, and I'm going to bet you, I'm going to bet you that Simon Sends Assets Editor Resources Workshop Item does not have the number in. Told you. 
Oh well, there we go. Now, if we go to the Steam Workshop, and we go to uh, Tim Wee Content, uh, Workshop Items, Simon Sins and Simon Sings, Simon Sins, Friends Only, Simon Sins, Friends Only, and also add an image. Definitely do the Royal Flush TP support TP side. Yep, I am going to. Um, let's, uh, Simon Sings Assets Missed Preview Image 2. Upload. While that is uploading, let me pour. Pour me a drink. Oh my, that was quick. Oh, of course, I have a new internet connection. That's why it was quick. See, I'm still used to things taking ages. Um, and I'm not actually used to being on, on a stream, so yeah. Um, wait a second, why are all of them black in the middle? That is annoying. I didn't pay attention to that. I should have, should have paid attention to that. What was that? Sure, is this your um, ID? Space screw one, two, three. Let's see. Um, friends. Nope. Uh, oh, there we go. Steam friends. Um, at friends. Space, whoop, space crew one two three. Uh, no. Yeah, I will need your name then. Um, that Simon sends. And I suppose at this point, I can also open source tree. Let's go to GitHub. And uh, let's enter a passphrase. Simon sings. First playable version. Um, yeah, that's good. Simon sends. That one already has a first playable version, but oh, 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 oh! I want to, I want to make sure I don't submit. Well, I, I guess I've already submitted it now, but. See, the problem is that every time that I make a change to a mod model, uh, Unity always generates materials for every model that has changed. Apparently, it hasn't done this here, so I must have remembered to uh, delete them. But you can see here in Source Tree that Simon Sins had these extra materials here, which you know, I have to delete because they're redundant. Uh, yeah, okay, apparently I've deleted all of them, so that's good. So, um, Let's see, workshop item, that one's there, and then this is the SVG. Oh, I still need to minify the SVGs in the hello shot. Um, space crew BG, okay. Um, let's see, space crew BG. There are no users that match your search. Let's search for just space crew, why don't I do that? Hmm, I wonder which one it is. It could be either. Because this one... Oh no, it is the first one, isn't it? Um, I suppose, since I'm done with Unity, I can restart Steam and that's okay. But it's a bit weird that I would do that. Okay, so this one here... Hmm. No information given. Well, this one... The above. That that doesn't help me. Uh, oh, the... Ah, the... Okay, the one above. Okay, that one. Got it. Um, what is the name of that new module you're doing? There are two shot fire. Um, I will post the links to them in the Discord when I'm done. In fact, I might as well just do that now, I guess. Um, so, okay, so this one here, add friend. Uh, friend invite send. Close, close. Uh, close. Chump, chump. Um, modding, um, breaking news, uh, two new friends only modules to playtest, uh, Simon Sins and Simon Sings by Tim Wee by Mario X-Man and Tim Wee. Well, actually, Mario X Turn, I think, is the name he uses nowadays. Yep, yep, yep. 
it doesn't let me auto complete that. Okay. Oh, it did. Okay, that's fine then. So let's uh, close that, close that. Uh, Steam community error. Yes, of course, because Discord is not my friend. <laughs> I suppose I no, love you. Okay. Um, GitHub. Um, um, a new repository. Simon sends pain. A module for keep talking and nobody explodes created by Tim Wee. Um, create that. And uh, uh, let's do that. Simon sends. Oh yeah, I wanted to minim minify the SVG. I mustn't forget. Um, that exit. So um, clean up a bit. Um, do that and push that. I guess. Push. Okay, now let's do the same as Simon Sings. Click new repository. Contains Simon Sings. Created by Mario X Man. And I'm putting X Man here because that's the name I used in uh, Mafia. If Mario has any um, uh, objections, then he can let me know. Uh, so let's push. Boink. Boink. Okay, here we go. So Simon sends. Let's reload this. And there it is. Yay! We have some commits here. Three commits already. First commit, first playable version, and clean up a bit. Uh, first subscriber to both of the new modules. Oh, you don't know that. Hi, Royal Flush. You missed the uh, meat of it. But hey, Royal Flush, I'm currently pushing things to GitHub. So, um,. Actually, you kind of missed that too. I already created the repos. Now all that's left uh, for me is to minify those two SVGs inside of the Simon Sends manual. The first one, this one here, um, let's see, take all of that, go here, paste, and copy that. Hmm, that looks a bit small. But uh, see if the the view box is correct. So let's let's see if that works. Let's go to go to a local host. Um, that one here sends. Okay, that looks correct. And then the second one is the Morse code chart, which I'm gonna put in here. Paste, copy, paste. Aha. Okay, let's see. Um this one. Do I need X link? Do I need X link? Um apparently I do use X link here. Although I'm not quite sure what this is. Oh, because this is because I copied it from the uh, uh there we go, path ID A. Okay, you know what? I'm 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 not gonna fiddle with that now gonna leave it. The view box looks correct, so version I suppose can go away. Um, let's refresh this page. Ooh, it has changed. Um, it has probably changed because the... oh yeah yeah no I remember. I remember. Um, well let's take a look at Simon Sense here, because this will show me... hello? Oh no, it, I changed it here. There you go. Simon sends. Oh, I didn't submit. Oh, oh, but I can just I can just go here and just update the manual for Simon sends, and then I will see the changes here. There we go. Okay. So the old one had a width equals fifteen centimeters. This is what I want. So the first one here has a width fifteen centimeters. And the second one, which is here, had a width of 370. I'd rather have it in units, so I'm, I'm gonna experiment with this myself, and I'm gonna say 10 centimeters, see how that looks. That looks okay, except that the box is now 
missing the top and bottom. That is weird. Um, let me just see. No. Hmm. Okay, something got messed up. So I am going to undo this part. It's gonna be huge. Uh, let's just stage this part. So now we've staged the change to the first SVG, and now I can undo this one. Reload. Reload. Oh, right. I need to. Boink. No, I did not need to do that. Oh, oh, shit, shit, shit. I'm stupid. I want to move it the, the opposite way. So I want to uh, copy uh, that. No, I want to copy some sends assets. No, not assets. Manual some sends iteration. Oh, I want to. Oh. Let's try that again. Copy manual some sends to public HTML. Yes, overwrite that. Thank you. Now reload. Right. This is what I want. This is how I want it to look. And now I'm going to see what everyone said. Um. The news are broken. Not sure what you mean. Shotfire, make sure that you're um, make sure that you're logged in in Steam. Okay. Um. So let me let me see what I need to do here. So this SVG. Let's just copy it to a separate file. Call it uh, temp SVG, um, and let's open that in Inkscape. That looks fine. That looks totally fine. I can't subscribe. And yes, I'm on. No, no, short fine. Not online on Steam. Uh, you need to be logged in on the website. Okay. Um, Yeah, it says error because you're not logged in. Make sure you're Tim with friend on Steam. You need to make sure of that too. Shotfire. Um, uh, Shotfire, just click this. Uh, add friends. Uh, Shotfire is probably a lot of people with that name. Yes, there is a lot. Um, what's your Shotfire Scout? Okay, let's try that. Shotfire Scout. Nope. Shotfire Scout 009. That is a huge coincidence. I'm going to click Add Friend. Although it says Brazil. Are you really from Brazil? Hmm. I suspect that this is not you. <laughs> Oops. And I just sent a friend request to this person. Oops. Um, it is you? Okay, well, then just accept the... Then just accept the... Uh, the, the Friend request. Okay, now here, uh, let's take that, put that in here, paste, and for some reason this loses the top and bottom edge. So let's figure out uh, what I can change to uh, remove view box. Uh, I don't want to remove that. Um, which of these many, many options could be responsible for that? So I guess I'm going to have to like, just t turn off everything. And it's still there. Um, this is really weird. Why would, why would this happen? Ah, bingo. Prefer view box. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay, now let's turn it all back on. Okay, I think this is correct. Um, okay, so this is the one that causes it. Okay, so let's copy that. See what it looks like now. 
we have a width and a height, and we still have a view box. That's right. Now I'm going to remove that width and height. I'm going to make it width. Um, what did I say? Uh, 10 centimeters. There you go. Copy that in here. There we go. And then let's reload this page. And it's still broken. It is still broken. Why is it broken? I don't understand. Uh, let's see what it thinks of this SVG. Uh, if I save this file, yep, that breaks it. Um, this is correct. If I remove the height, the height breaks. Removing the height, oh, that means the view box is not correct. Let's see what happens if I set it to what the width and height were earlier. Oh, still doesn't look correct, but what if I remove this now? Well, at least it stays as broken. Okay, this is what I expected. Um, so, let me think. The top is missing, so let's change this to something like, okay. Why? Well, I'm just gonna deal with that. So, um, remove that, and we want the width to be 10 centimeters. Copy and paste that in here. Uh, change that, boink, and reload that page. <laughs> so, what happens with that? Uh, take that. Oh yeah, there is, see, there is a lot of margin on the right and the bottom, so the width and the height aren't actually correct. Um, so let, oh, I can actually experiment with that right here, by just changing the number here. Oh, I have to press enter, to, oh, I have to press enter to acknowledge, damn it. Okay, right, I'm happy with that. Um, I think on the left there is, Pixel or two missing, yep, that looks good. And now the height. 290 looks more like 270. Ah, let's make it 271. Yep. Okay, that looks good. So let's um Okay. Um put that in here. I have no idea why the view box would be askew like this with negative four, negative ten, but you know, I I don't care. Uh, close that, close that, and that looks good. So now, hi Eternity Shack. Hey Eternity Shack, do you want to play test the modules? I don't know if we're already friends. Let, let me check that. Whoops. Uh, at friends, Eternity Shack. Yep, that's the one you are friends. Okay, so you can test the modules. They're, they're posted in PogChamp. I don't know what that means. Oh, oh, I see that. Yeah, the emo emote. That's right. Uh, yeah, boy, spicy chicken sandwich. Uh, whatever rocks your boat there. Um, so I want to update that. And with that, uh, oh yeah, and I want to recreate the uh, uh, PNG for that. PNG, P PDF. Um, there we go. Save. Simon sends. Put that there. Open Unity. And Kappa. Yes. What was this one called? Um, Ru what? Ru what? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Um, so, um, let's do that. Boink, boink, boink. There we go. Now in Simon Sins, we have updated the SVG. Update SVGs in manual. Why is the PDF not... Why, why does why does the PDF not show up as change? No, oh, there you go. It did change. Knew it. Uh, update SVG manual. Push that. Simon sings. Um, 
Is that right? That that's probably done. And now I'm going to. Simon sends and Simon sings manuals. Now you can get them on the webs. No, you can't. Because I'm stupid, because in all of my absence with seven days of no internet, I never pulled. So I have to pull. Um, we, when we going to try the new models like a playtest? You can already do that. Uh, they're on day workshop, they're friends only. Well, I'm not currently home at the moment. Currently, uh, you don't know who's better in LOL, but someone you met before. Possible, but I don't recognize the name. Do you want to tell me uh, what name you go by on Discord? Then I might be able to recognize you. Um, let's see. I have uncommitted. I still have uncommitted change. I thought I just submitted. Oh, th that one. Okay. Um, let's go back to here. Um, it has already done a merge. Okay, that's cool. So let's push. Push. We made a me of you. I don't know what, what a me is. I'm probably, um, I'm probably out of the loop. So, with all of that done, ah, ladies and gentlemen, Simon says, uh, <laughs> Simon sings and Simon sends are now officially done. And if you go to containtimwe.de slash html, uh, here is sings and here is sends. There is the manual. Here is the first manual. Here is the second manual. Is absolutely working fine. Um, yeah, okay. So, thank you very much for your attention. I guess I'm going to end the stream here for now. Um, if I make more modules in the future, I'm tempted to stream those as well. I might stream my um, Twitch Plays uh, implementation. Actually, since Royal Flush is here now, Royal Flush, are you still here? If so, um, are you going to put your modules up on GitHub anytime soon so that we can add Twitch Play support? Because everyone is itching to add that and to have your modules on Twitch Play. But if you don't want to do it anytime soon, then we're going to have to go the laborious route and put the uh, TP support into TP itself, which is harder to do. So we would much rather um, have your modules on GitHub so we can do this the easy way. Are you up for that? And yes, Simon Sends and Simon Sings. And those are the two new modules. Okay. So, um, since there is no response from Royal Flush, well, actually, I probably haven't given you enough time because of the stream delay, um, Royal isn't here. Okay. Well, that is a bummer, because I would have liked to hear his reaction. Yes, hello, Sam. Um, I, I saw that you're here when you told me that Royal isn't here. Um, I don't know how much of the stream you saw, Sam. If you only just joined, then you've missed the action, because I'm going to end here. Um, but anyway, so I will see you guys again. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.